All right, all right, chat. Very good afternoon. I hope we're doing well today. Welcome to the stream. Welcome indeed. Alrighty. Bit of an earlier stream today because um, we've got this uh, de-icing event going on at, uh, at Helsinki, which I'm really, really looking forward to. They've got uh, basically the, the, the premise of the event is that they're going to have some, uh, some dedicated uh, de-ice uh, controlled positions online for the event, which should be really, really cool. Um, very much looking forward to that. Obviously, we've got de-icing uh just a visual thing but we've got de-icing available in uh, in gsx uh, so we're going to be making use of that and uh obviously we can do remote de-icing now and uh, we've got a gsx profile here for helsinki whereby we can actually go ahead and um uh, we can actually use the remote de-icing stands they've got a little uh sort of um vdgs-esque uh, thing there as well where they can uh, where we can uh, taxi up it'll tell us to stop it'll tell us the status of the de-ice and stuff like that it's really really cool uh, so really looking forward to uh, to that so today we're going to be flying uh, like I say we're doing the de-ice event on Vatsim uh, we're going to be flying from Helsinki <clears throat> over to uh, Copenhagen we've got the MK Studios Helsinki and uh, of course the brilliant flight time for Copenhagen one of my all time favourite sceneries for the sim and uh yeah so we're going to be flying over to there today we may 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 do the return leg depending on how i feel afterwards but um uh that is the plan for today we're flying in the phoenix a320 and uh yeah it should be really really cool um like i say it is a bit of an earlier stream than normal today uh, mainly to facilitate being able to participate in the event uh for you guys on stream and uh, obviously for myself, of course. Um, so, uh, yeah, hence why the lighting's a little bit different. It's because I've got a window right in front of me here. And um, it's still quite bright outside. So, um, yeah, that's that. All right. So, uh, just before we get into things, quick shout out to all of the uh, gold and platinum channel members. Excuse me. I have just had my lunch as well. <laughs> so, um yeah, big shout out to the Golden Platinum members on the channel. So we've got Matt, Rasso, Roy, Lucas, Sasha, uh, Mikael, The Commentator, Andy, Ivy, Naughty, and Schutz. Thank you guys for all your continued, continued support. And of course, a big shout out and a thanks to all of the Silver members on the channel as well. All right, so uh, who we got in the chat today? We've got uh, Callum's here. Quizzy is here as well. Roy, good afternoon. Hope you're doing well, Roy. Welcome. Good to see you. Aviator04, welcome back to the chat. Good to see you again. Uh, Patrick Volp, welcome indeed. Hope you're doing well. Good morning to you. Uh, AC, good afternoon to you. Obviously, all from different time zones here. Uh, Severi's here as well. Welcome, Severi. Hope you're doing well. Uh, flew today from EFOU to EFHK. DIC made a whole mess on the window at uh, 10F. <laughs> yeah, you want to have a word with your de-icers. Get them to be a bit more precise with that spraying. <laughs> um, yeah, looking forward to giving that a try. I don't think we've ever used the de-ice on, in GSX on the stream. So looking forward to it. I've been sort of reading up on my uh, de-icing procedures. Um, so I'm pretty well versed i think now in the full de-ice procedure for the a320 and uh the associated uh, checklist uh so we'll be running through all of that today as well so looking forward to that uh roy is uh he's still setting up a new system okay very good very good well uh hopefully uh hopefully have you joining us sometime soon did you get my message on discord by the way roy about the uh uh, the the 5800X3D. How are the cows today? Patrick, they're still in their barn, shed, whatever you want to call it. Then they're, they're still not out yet. They're still uh, hibernating for the winter. Uh, Jan out. Welcome to the chat. Hope you're doing well. And uh, Numa, welcome to the chat indeed. Right then, guys. So let's get uh, let's get rocking and rolling then, shall we? All right, so we're here on the ground currently at uh, Helsinki. Um, the event doesn't actually start till 4 p.m., um, but I decided to obviously start the stream a little bit early just so I can sort of get situated. And um, I'm, I'm just going to run through some of the procedures and things we 
want to take into account for this flight today. Uh, get, let's get logged on to VATSIM first of all. There is a controller on currently at uh, Helsinki, but um, uh, we want to just uh, wait a little bit longer, I think, until all of the relevant frequencies come online so we can uh, request the de-icing, etc. Right. Okie-cokies and chat. So, as I said, we're here on the ground at Helsinki. I've wound the time back by a couple of hours. Uh, refueler is here as well. Obviously, the sun's going down uh, pretty pretty soon here in uh, in Helsinki. So, as we normally do, let's uh, have a look at the OFP, and I'm going to just run through some other sort of procedures, I guess, with you guys. Uh, not only just to share with you guys, but also to uh, sort of run through the procedures uh, and make them fresh in my mind uh, as well. So, let's uh, let's have a jump over to the fuzz pad. Uh, it's stand... Um, I think it's 2-3. 2-6, Sasha. Stand 2-6. Right, okie dokies then chat. So, right, today we are going to be uh, Finnair 959 and uh, we're going from uh, Helsinki Vanta to uh, Copenhagen Copenhagen Kastrup Airport. Uh, we're in an A320 registration Oscar Hotel Lima X-Ray Alpha. That is the, uh, the aircraft you may remember. We actually flew this one last time we flew Finnair and uh, it's actually the one with the... Uh, the engine cowling with the uh, slightly different colour on it. So that's what we're going to be flying today. Um, call sign is going to be Finnair 7 Lima Tango. Expected off blocks time is 16.05 I've put here. Uh, but we may need to wait a little bit later than that just to get the uh, full procedure going with the uh, de-icing, etc. Uh, expected on blocks time 17.57 Zulu. These are obviously current Zulu times, though. Obviously not the uh, exact same time in the uh, simulator. Uh, cost index is going to be 15. I'm still not sure the cost index Finnair uses and uh, covering 564 miles over the ground. Uh, fairly heavy today, 65.3 tons expected for the uh, takeoff weight. And our alternate is going to be uh, Gothenburg. MPS's uh, local airfield, I believe. Good evening, though. Welcome. Good timing. <laughs> welcome, indeed. Um, but Sasha, welcome also. Can I see you? It depends. What uh, livery are you in? There's uh, two aircraft here. Um, I can see a Finnair and an SAS anyway. Um, we're going to be cruising at flight level 380. And the en route time is an hour and 24 minutes. And we do have a slight tailwind for today, but nothing too great. One knot on average. And then if we need to divert, it's another 31 minutes. Uh, block field is going to be 6670. Not expecting it to be crazy, crazy busy at Copenhagen. Um, so I think we'll just uh, round that up to 6.7 and uh, that should be good. Um, coming a bit further down, the... Uh, departure we're expecting here at Helsinki is 04 right, and it's going to be on the Nunto 4 Charlie. Again, that's what we're expecting. We do have a control online here. We can see it is actually departure runway 04 right. Um, so that is likely. Um, and then we're going to be expecting 04 left at Copenhagen on the Tidview 2 Alpha arrival. Again, so we'll, we'll see how that goes. So, right. Further down, we're nearly full on passengers, 158 for today and uh, 2.4 tons of cargo. And then coming further down, weather is looking pretty fine, really. Um, weather at uh, Helsinki is, is not too bad, really. Uh, some uh, Quite a low cloud base and obviously low temperature. Um, but other than that, uh, not too bad. We've got a decent amount of wind coming in from the, uh, the south. Uh, sorry from the northwest uh, but other than that uh, nothing too crazy similar situation at uh, Kastrup at uh, Copenhagen but with uh, no clouds a little bit warmer there as well and the weather at um, our alternate Gothenburg is, is is about the same story really um, so obviously in these conditions probably wouldn't need to do any de-icing procedures normally excuse me however I did look at the um, the weather earlier on in the day here 
excuse me the weather early on in the day here at uh, helsinki and it has been snowing today um so what we're going to do is we are just going to assume that this is the first flight this aircraft has done today and the wings etc they're all contaminated and we will need to de-ice uh, so that's going to be our sort of cynism i suppose for today um obviously if it was snowing it'd be a much easier decision but um let's just assume that there is some contamination on the wings there that we do need to get off for the flight today um looking at the uh, the charts for the trip it's basically up to the north and then straight down southwest and then in to uh copenhagen from the east and then coming back on ourselves for runway uh, 04 uh left looking at significant weather charts uh we've got this line here but i can't quite see exactly what it's uh, representing it's probably uh well it's a jet stream isn't it but um can't really see any information regarding it um so let's actually just bring up Simbrief real quick and go to my flight plan and uh, we'll have a quick look on there because we can see a bit more of a zoomed out view of the uh, significant weather charts there uh right so yeah we've got a, a jet stream at flight level 260 so that could come a factor for us while we're descending we might get quite a strong crosswind as we're descending um but um yeah it shouldn't be shouldn't be a, a massive massive issue right cool um and then coming and well i think that's about all we need to look at for the ofp right cool so looking at the procedures for today so we've got some notes here from the um that's in scandinavia uh, sector who have uh, put together this document basically for the uh, de-icing procedures that's kind of uh, it's not really worth going through with you guys really it's relatively straightforward uh, but in a nutshell after we've got our uh, clearance uh, we're then going to contact the um, remote de-icing supervisor on this frequency here and uh, we're going to request a de-ice they're going to give us a apron in which the de-icing will take place and uh, because we're departing zero four right uh, it's quite highly likely that uh, it's actually going to be down on uh, on apron eight down here so i imagine that will be the case for today so that's probably what to expect there and then we will switch back to our normal frequency after we've done that and then essentially uh, once we approach once we request taxi from the normal ground controller um we'll just remind them or we'll say request taxi to de-ice and um they'll send us towards that on the taxi and then once we approach the de-icing position we'll get passed over to the uh, remote de-icing supervisor at which point we'll then uh, contact them and tell them that we are approaching the whole point for the de-ice and um and then um we'll run through the procedure with them um it's relatively straightforward it's more or less just uh tell them when you're ready to de-ice and um they will commence the de-icing and then you have to let them know when it's finished obviously because it's a bit of a simism i suppose and then they'll tell you what uh, type fluid they've used what mixture and uh, what time the holdover time starts at for the de-ice so this is something we're going to have a look at in just a second i mean it's not something we should go really really crazy over because obviously ice and the de-icing process is not really simulated in microsoft flight simulator i know icing is simulated to a to a degree but in the phoenix they actually recommend you have it turned off so i actually have it turned off for the phoenix so like i say there's not really any um proper simulation of that going on so we're not going to dwell on the holdover time situation too long um, but essentially the holdover time is the amount of time between after after the de-icing fluid is uh, applied to the aircraft and um, basically the time you have essentially until you need to take off basically uh, unless you're in a situation where um the if there's any precipitation at the time of de-ice if it stops sometime during the de-ice or between the, the the end of the de-ice 
and your takeoff time you can actually extend the holdover up to about i think it's 90 minutes so a lot longer um if the um precipitation or or any kind of visible moisture stops so um that's that um and we'll have a quick look like i say at the holdover times just to give you sort of an idea if you're not familiar with this uh what to expect um so let's just have a quick look at this this is a document published by the faa it is actually acceptable i believe to use this same document in europe and um regarding the uh type of fluids used that's usually chosen by the operators on the airports as well as the concentration um now in gsx you actually have a choice you can actually choose both the type and the concentration so we'll just have to kind of guess as to what we're probably going to get because there's no precipitation here today what we're probably going to get is we're probably going to get a um um we're probably going to get a type 1 fluid which has the lowest holdover time and uh, i'm not sure on what the concentration will be to be honest but um uh we shall see so just uh, flicking back over here very very quickly and having a look at the uh, the weather so the temperature is currently zero degrees here at uh, helsinki uh, so taking a look at this table this is for type 1 fluids on an aluminum or aluminium should i say <laughs> it's because i'm reading off an american document <laughs> uh, if we're this is basically for a um aircraft surfaces composed of aluminium as opposed to composites which the a320 is uh, aluminium and um, so you've got the various different kinds of um visible moisture here along the top and then along the left you've got the um different temperatures here um, so it's minus three and above at the moment and um, let's just say for an example there was some light snow light snow with a type 1 fluid we would have between an 11 minute and an 18 minute hold over time um, from the de-icing completing which is not that great really it's not a lot of time um, as you can see it's sort of color coded in terms of you know I suppose what is what is um, considered a, uh, a good amount of time really um that being said um well i, I don't know why it's color coded actually it might not be color coded for that reason but um as you can see 11 minutes to 18 minutes isn't is i suppose it's an okay amount of time i suppose it depends on the airport depends where the de-icing stands are depends how much traffic there is whether that is a good time or not and um for most purposes I, I would imagine that wouldn't be terrible especially here in helsinki where we're departing 04 right which is here you know and the de-icing stands are here so essentially as if there was no queue here you would just be straight off and straight onto the runway so that would probably be okay um but uh, for example if it was much colder like minus 10 degrees that's only gonna be four to seven minutes in uh, in light snow so um that probably wouldn't be the best type of fluid to use but again like i say that would be up to the people who operate on the airport to choose that i imagine they're probably gonna obviously choose something that's relevant to the current operation of the airport um so that's that regarding holdover time like i say i'm not going to dwell on it too too much um because like i say it's not really simulated but we'll try and sort of keep it in the back of our mind uh once the de-ice is uh, complete we'll start our chrono uh, so that we can time the deal, uh, the whole overtime ourselves and obviously in this case because we've got no precipitation um it's not really going to be um a, a worry for us at all and it's not really going to be a, a, a applicable to be honest um obviously it is cold but there's no precipitation no fog um any kind of uh really issue that we can uh think of that's that's gonna cause us issues with the hold overtime so um so yeah that's that and then looking finally at the uh the checklist for de-icing um this is one i took off black box's website big shout out to black box 711 who is uh, a great youtuber if you've not heard of him i'm sure you have um fantastic youtuber and uh, he's got loads of documents and uh instruction on his website blackbox711.com and uh, this is the uh, procedure for the de-icing uh, for the A320. So, 
Uh, you can de-ice with the APU running and, um, sorry, with the APU on or off or the engines on or off. Um, and before we actually get to this checklist, it would be a case of running through the normal procedures. If there is precipitation, um, you would not extend the flaps or do the flight controls check um, um, after the pushback. And um, from there, uh, you would just taxi out as normal to the DI stand, then you would run through this procedure. So it's cabin mode pressure mo mode selector in auto, which it usually is. Engine bleeds off, APU bleed off, ditching push button on, which is not one we commonly use. And uh, that's going to close all the outflow valves for the aircraft so that no de-icing fluid gets into the um, the aircraft or into the you know air conditioning system, etc. Thrust levers obviously want to check that they are idle. Um, and then that's it. Aircraft prepared for spraying, so inform ground crew. And then once the spraying is completed, basically the complete opposite procedure. Um, and then obviously we've got de-icing report received. And then uh, normal procedures resume a couple of minutes after completion. So that's that. Obviously checking that the uh, outflow valve has opened again after turning the ditching push button off. So that's that for that procedure. Relatively straightforward, really. Relatively straightforward. There are some fairly complex, uh, you know, parts of of, of de-icing. Um, but again, it's I suppose there's no real need to dwell on those too much at this stage in in, in this simulator because it's not really simulated. But it's obviously good to be you know aware of what it is and uh, how it affects the procedure generally. Okie dokes. Right then. So that is that. That was a rather long briefing to begin with, but I just wanted to kind of run you with you guys through that because um, we're not going to have as much time to uh, to cover that later on uh, once we're underway. So we shall start getting set up on the in the aircraft then, but uh, let's uh, first of all get our chair pulled forwards. Righty. Uh, Danny says, I've been wrecking my brain for months trying to figure out why the game looks so much better when watching streams. Figured out that my mobile phone is a ammo LED screen which produces superior colors and clarity compared to... Ah, that could be it. <laughs> that could be it, yeah. Ah, well. Maybe you'll just have to buy a new monitor then. <laughs> that's an excuse I've never if that's uh, not not a good excuse um just doing one leg of the Sasha one leg at least that's what I've planned one leg but I might I might do two but I'm I'm not 100 percent uh did you know that you can also set the height of the seats oh really really I, I don't think I've ever tried that. Oh, you can. <laughs> I love that the sound is there as well. That's brilliant. <laughs> uh, you and Aimbot, welcome to the chat. Hope you're doing well. Welcome indeed. Right. Absolutely lovely low sun here in uh, Helsinki. Uh, we do already have the fueler here, so uh, let's uh, let's not keep him waiting uh, too much longer. And uh, we'll start getting set up for the flight today. Right. So obviously we're using a slightly different sim time to what I generated the sim brief flight plan on. So I'm just going to amend that. So we've got something a bit, uh, a bit more uh, uh, useful. So we'll go to uh, 14... We'll put it to 14.15. I think that's probably reasonable. That's not worked. Update. There we go. Right. Fantastic. Sometimes it doesn't seem to update this time here and then this departing here. I'm not sure why. I think you have to... I think I worked this out the other day. I think you've got to close the Phoenix app and then reopen it. I'm not sure if... No. Okay, never mind. <laughs> 
All right, and then just a quick check again. We've got an 80s here. We've got information hotel 1520. So this is the most recent one. Departure runway 04 right. Uh, winds 320 12 knots. Q and H nine nine are four, and the temperature zero degrees. That is what we were expecting, and uh, that's what our pilot monitor. Excuse me, our pilot monitoring the captain here is already set, so that's good. Love to see it. Has our jetway disconnected? It has. Not sure why it done that, but. Oh, you know what? Today, you know what, chat. There was an update today to GSX, and I've completely forgotten to do it. It was. Uh, it was. They actually did an update to so you guys might have noticed in the previous streams when you do the boarding when you do the boarding with gsx uh, there's this bug in it at the moment where if there's not a rear staircase it actually opens the back door now um he's actually fixed that in the latest update which is fantastic but i actually forgot to run the update so never mind Right, anyways, let's get cracking with the uh, flights. The fuel truck is in position, position. We can request the catering as well. For fuel, we're going to just knock that on to 6.7 there. So that's 6.7. Lovely stuff. And uh, we'll go ahead and start loading uh, the fuel on board. Lovely stuff. Uh, Pallet monitor has already been in and sort of done the initial setup. He's forgotten to turn the oxygen on. Sorry, he has turned the oxygen on. I'm, I'm done. Right. <laughs> so he's uh, already been in here and he's uh, set up a few of the uh, the usual bits here and there. So that's all good. Uh, everything else is, yeah, pretty much set. Uh, Pilot monitoring has done the, uh, the work for us today. So um, nav database is current. That's all looking actually no it isn't <laughs> oh i forgot to update that one as well okay not a problem it is out of date but it shouldn't be an issue for this flight today so we'll uh, request the flight plan there we go looking good no issues with the import there right so we're going to be uh fin seven uh, Lima Tango and a cost index of 1.5 cruising flight level 3.8.0 and uh, the temperature up there is uh, going to be uh, minus 46 degrees so that's set temperature on the ground here is 0 degrees and the wind will request that for the climb Lovely stuff. Great, great, great. Uh, on aimbots, um, I'm not entirely sure what you're saying there, my friends. Perhaps you could rephrase. <laughs> MPS is back with a cup of tea and a sandwich. Very good. That sounds like a fantastic afternoon uh, snack. Am I on 4K in the game, but not on stream? No, I'm, on, I'm streaming... Sorry, I'm playing the sim in the same resolution that I am uh, streaming in. So, um, we're 1440p. Uh, but welcome, Theodore. I hope you're doing well. How many FPS am I getting in Heathrow without streaming add-on scenery and Phoenix? Um, well, I'm, my streaming PC is... is well, I have, a, I have a separate streaming PC. So, the FPS you see that I'm getting here will be the same as what I get when the stream's not running which is usually around 30 to 40 fps right so let's continue then so uh departure we're expecting uh that is the wrong button departure we're expecting zero for right and we're expecting the uh nunto for charlie departure lovely stuff and uh we shall be expecting arrival zero for left at uh Hells copenhagen on the tidvu 2 alpha Looks like the catering is here as well. Very good. That's some nice lighting, isn't it? Crikey. There's PDC, is there? Thank you, Sasha. Thank you very much. Uh, 
Okie dokies. We request the boarding as well. Of passengers. Actually, you know what? I'm, I'm not even going to bother with that. You don't even see the passengers, do you, when they're uh, going through a jetway? I'm not even going to bother. Right, so... Departure and arrival is in. For the departure, let's just check everything is in correctly. There's no actual restrictions on the departure itself with regards to altitude. There is a speed constraint at Lulab, 250 knots. That is in there, so that is good. Uh, what we'll also do as well is we'll just check on, uh, again, Black Box's website. We'll just check the departure procedures here, which is NADP1. We'll adjust that when we come to the Perth page. And uh, the departure 404 right, if we have an engine failure, uh, we'll go EFHK 04 right. And we'll stick in the engine out SID, which is track 038. Uh, to 25 nautical miles and holds. That is it. Very straightforward for the departure there. If we have an engine out, Sid. So it's basically just straight out on that blue line and then hold over there. Cool. Great. Okay, so Radnav. Uh, this is an RNAV departure we're doing today. So we're not going to put anything on here. That's fine. Secondary flight plan will copy the active and just set up for a return to field. Oops. We'll just set up for a return to a field. Um, EFHK. Not going to spend too long on that though because we are going to... We're not going to have a engine failure with uh, us being on VATSIM. Um, but what I will do is I will make sure random failures are on and a failure rate high, which they are. So that's fine. Cool. All right, so in it B then, we'll uh, just need to get our load sheet. I don't think dispatch have sent us it yet. They have not, so we'll uh, just ask them. We'll give them a nudge here and ask them to resend it. So load sheets, uh, we'll accept that. 58.8 on the zero fuel weight. And the um, CG going to be 31.6. Block fuel. Uh, we do have we have actually finished refueling now, so 6.7 tons, and uh, we'll stick on the seatbelt sign whilst I remember. So that's good. Uh, cruising flight level above max flight level. Interesting. Okay, we'll have a look at that in in a second. We know the Phoenix. Sometimes the f performance figures are not exactly matching up with uh, sim brief. Uh, so, alternate fuel is going to be 1.5 tons, so we'll put that in there. And the trip fuel is actually pretty much the same as Simbrief for once, so that's good. Um, I did give it a positive 5% on Simbrief, so uh, it's still more than Simbrief, but uh, only by uh, uh, 0.1, so that's fine. Uh, extra fuel, 0 0.2, that's all good. Right, great stuff. I'm actually going to put in... I should have accounted for this on the... Um, on Simbrief, but we'll put taxi fuel to 0.3 um, because we've got the de-icing process that we're expecting today. Cool. So, performance calculation. We'll do that for the departure now. Uh, so, it's going to be 0 for right. And uh, the one-way service is... Um, well, it's not actually wet, is it? Because it's no, not snowing at all at the moment. So we'll go packs on. And um, that's fine. So if it, if it was obviously contaminated, we would be forcing toga here. But um, it's not. So we'll move forward with that. Oh, look at that. The live meta does actually say... This was at 1520. It does actually say light snow on the meta. So that's, that's changed since we were last here. Um, snow is in the forecast. It is in the TAF. Doesn't actually look like it's snowing in the sim yet though, but it may happen. Let's check we're on live weather, which I'm pretty sure we are. Quite a few people here already, actually. Got an aircraft taxiing in over there. 
and some more people down here as well well at least one person down there right okie dokie i'll tell you what i'll do fuck it we'll just we'll just do the boarding on simbri fuck it <laughs> right let's carry on um just because we've got a bit of time here before all of the relevant frequencies come online for the event so let's calculate our takeoff speeds then One fifty, one fifty, one five, one, one down, zero point three, and then fifty five for the flex. Quite high speeds, those. Uh, one down, zero point five, and fifty five. All the fives, and then the thrust reduction acceleration is going to be uh, slightly different for Helsinki, so it's going to be uh, acceleration height of three one eight zero. And then uh, thrust reduction. Black Box's website does say one uh, one six eight zero, but I'm pretty sure it's any anywhere above eight hundred feet above ground level. You can reduce your thrust, um, so that's fine. We'll do it there. Um, I'm not I'm not actually sure why the thrust reduction is so low on this. Actually, I wonder if that's what uh, Finnair use by standards. Let's set it to one six eight zero. Then engine out is going to be one seven hundred. Right. Oh, I got that wrong. <laughs> Down zero point three. It's because of all the fires and everything. Right. Lovely stuff. Okie kokie. And then the initial climb we're expecting is actually uh, four thousand feet, but. Um, we won't set that exactly yet. We'll just set it to 4,100 to remind us that uh, we haven't got a clearance just yet. Okie dokies. So, just quickly checking the departure here on the um, on the ND, making sure it all looks correct. So, it's a left turn and then out to the uh, southwest. So, that looks good to me. Yeah, great stuff. Okie dokes. So we'll do the briefing for the uh, charts, etc. Once we've actually got our clearance. Um, so let's see. Hello. We have got a center controller on at the moment, but um, I'm going to just wait until I think the Helsinki controllers come online to um, start getting the clearance, etc. Because it might... Once the event starts, they might start, you know, they might do things a little bit, a little bit differently. So, just gonna wait for them to come online before we, uh, yeah, before we do anything. So, apologies, chat. I'm a little bit ahead of schedule today, which is uh, quite surprising for me. <laughs> but nevertheless, we are still loading passengers, etc. Here, so no reason to rush. Only half of them are on board currently. So we're still going to have a bit of time here uh, before we need to get underway. Righto. Okie dokies. PDC is no fun. <laughs> I suppose that depends on your uh, your persuasion, I suppose, Brendan. I, I quite enjoy... Um, I quite enjoy using the CPDLC C system, um, but that being said, I do see what you mean. It is quite fun, obviously, you know, using your voice as well. I do enjoy that, but yeah, I see what you're saying. Um, no, you don't have to book for this event, Sasha. Uh, Gummy Chocker Donuts, welcome to the stream. Hope you're doing well. Good, to, good, glad to have you. Welcome indeed. I hope you enjoy your time here. Welcome, welcome. Uh, 
I don't think the out of date database is that big of an issue now. It's not, no, Roy. I mean, month to month, it doesn't change that much, does it? As we've just demonstrated, everything was still there. Um, let's see. Is it a big? Is it MPS says? Is it a big event today? Um, I'm not sure if it's a big, big event, but um, you know, there is an event, so it should be busier than normal traffic. Um. Uh, Prabhat says, uh, sorry if I'm pronouncing that wrong, by the way, but uh, welcome. Uh, Prab Prabjot, um, am I from the UK? Yes, I am. Uh, Jonathan says, you do see the passengers. Yes, you do, yeah, but only really if you turn your head around and look. These jetways don't have any glass. And you can't really see from this angle. But... Yeah, that's all I meant. You can see them obviously coming in here, can't you? But, um, yeah. That's all I meant. Um, I think this livery is customised as well, actually, for thin air. Um, it definitely is a bit of a different interior, isn't it? Not sure how much the livery creator has done in this case. They've left the Phoenix logos in, though, unfortunately. Um, but it is quite decent. Let's see. Is there anything down here? Nothing down here. Yeah, I mean, it's definitely got a different interior, doesn't it? But it's not. There's not too much going on. And there's a big gap between the jetway and the plane here. I'm not sure exactly why. Because if you see... We're nicely... Oh. We're a little bit far back here. I wonder why that is. I did reposition the aircraft before the stream. I'm sure we were on this line. Right on the line. Um, so that's why the jetway is so far forward. But it should still reach because we're right on the center line. For the parking stands. Well, actually, no, we're not. But nevertheless, that gap is much bigger. What is going on anyway? I... I I could have sworn when I set up the stream that we were right on the centre line there. Oh well, never mind. Because I've got a, a GSX profile, and as I normally do for this, uh, for pretty much every stream, is I always test the GSX profile to make sure that it's actually good. Because sometimes I download a GSX profile, it just doesn't match exactly. You know, it's like sometimes the pushbacks are off the centre line or. The parking stands are a little bit too far forwards, or they're not on the center line. Um, so I always check that kind of stuff before I start the stream, and... I was so certain that I was parked perfectly here. <laughs> oh well, never mind. Not a big deal. Not a big deal. Um, so we're here at MK Studios. Um... Helsinki, which is a fantastic scenery. They've done actually a really cool job with the snow here. Uh, I don't know how they've managed to get it to kind of look, you know, a bit more realistic than other airports, but yeah, it's, it's all right. I mean, obviously, there still is far too much snow, <laughs> but it does look marginally better than, uh, than other ones. And on the <laughs> land side is just terribly terribly white i would think there'd be quite a few accidents out here if it was this uh this snowy uh in the real world don't you just trying to think i don't know if we have departed from this side of the airport before and it's snowy inside as well <laughs> usually we depart on this side there is quite a few aircraft here, isn't there? Jet Time. I've never heard of them. Oh, there you go. There's that bug that I was talking about with GSX where it automatically opens up the back door for, for some reason for the boarding. So yeah, it is quite a nice scenery, this. I do enjoy it. It looks really good without the snow as well, to be fair. If not better, to be fair. Because uh, it's just not totally coated in whiteness hopefully they do a nice little update on it and uh use the new because obviously a sobo changed 
the sim, didn't they, fairly recently, whereby the um, snow doesn't cover the taxiways and the runways quite in the same way. So hopefully they update it to take advantage of that. Alrighty, well, there goes the bagage. Quite rare for the baggage handlers to finish before the passengers, actually. I wonder if they've tweaked that in GSX in, in the recent updates. Um, I'll tell you what I did do, though, chat, um, just last night, is I did a flight between Athens and um, Sofia. I, I purchased the Fly Too High scenery for Sofia. Um, and to be honest, I was kind of a little bit disappointed with it. With, with, it is a nice scenery. It does look good. Um, it is a, a good basis, but the ground textures are just a little bit wonky and there's um, a lot of missing um, ground markings as well, which is unfortunate as well. Right, let's have a look and see what the situation is regards to Helsinki. We've got 13 departures. And... Uh, 15 arrivals, so fairly busy. Not crazy, but fairly busy. And at the moment, we don't have any controllers online on the field. So we're just going to hang out fire for a short while here whilst we wait for the controllers to come online. And uh, I'm sorry all the, to all the controllers, but they're probably going to get absolutely hounded. <laughs> Right. 24 hours of VATSIM. Yeah, that's today, isn't it? Yeah, but I don't think they're using this airport. Oh, they've all just come online all at once. Crikey. Amazing. Right. Do they have a delivery controller or a ground controller? They do have clearance delivery. 118125. Alright, let's get rocking and chats. Two five, right? Cool. Helsinki ground. Very good evening. This is uh, SF. Wow. Uh, Naven, the timing. The timing. Hotel. And um, nine 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 four. Me and Sasha just started speaking at the exact same time there. It'd be nice if you could trial a scenery before buying it. Yeah, that would be good. Yeah. Stand by, I need to do something. Stand by for a skydiving 632, roger that. Helsinki, delivery, good day, Sinara 884, Foxtrot, stand 160, crossing I have a clearance to. This frequency is about to get very busy. Um, right, we'll we'll tune the de-icing supervisor in the um, standby, which is one three three eight five zero. Scandinavian six three two. You are clear to to your destination, Copenhagen, runway zero for right, Nunto for Charl, departure, initial climb, 4,000 feet. And we'll put the de-icing uh, controller on. Runway zero for right, Nato 3, Nato 2, Tango departure, initial climb. I'm just going to turn this down for a second. 
Right, so we'll put the DIC controller on uh, on this side, just so we don't have to have that... Uh, sorry, we'll put the DIC frequency on this side, which is going to be 112165. Uh, uh, no, I'm for Charlie Department. I run with 041 for Skynaven 632. Skynaven 632, clear. Correct. 40 icing, contact 3 icing, supervisor on 133, decimal 850. Contact direct, stand, this icing, 1, 1, 1, 1, we're probably going to have to wait a second here to actually speak here. Everyone's going to request a clearance at the same time. Um, but yes, chat. Um, would be good to trial sceneries before buying them, yeah, that's for sure. Um, I am actually, I do have a concept in mind for a scenery review type series for the channel. Um, that is going to be in a little bit of a short form. Um... Yeah, I mean, I think obviously YouTube YouTube reviews is a great way to uh, see what scenery is like before buying it. Um, but unfortunately, there seems to be quite a bit of a lack of those actually quality reviews and uh, previews going on at the moment. Obviously, there's people that um, will stream them, which is great. Obviously, we do that as well sometimes, and we you know showcase the sceneries on the channel as best as possible. Um, but in terms of, you know, some of the smaller, less well-known developers, um, you know, it's sometimes a bit difficult to find any good information on those. And the one that I purchased of Sophia, um, you know, it looks good from the screenshots. You know, the, the modeling and texturing of the buildings is, is good. Um, and to be honest, most of the airport is good. Um, it's just the ground textures and the ground markings are a little bit lacking, and, and you couldn't really see that on the screenshots. So, um, yeah. That was a bit of a sad one, and you you guys know, I put a lot of emphasis and on ground textures and ground markings, taxiway signage, for um for sceneries because it is so important. I think you obviously that's they're two of the things that you see the most, uh, especially in airliner operations and on VATSIM. It's important to have the correct ground markings as well, so that you know where you're going and you know what science stand you're pulling into, etc. Um, so. We've got a final load sheet there. It's compliance, so we don't need to make any changes in the uh, the MCDU. So that's good. Right, there's a moment here we can request our clearance. Helsinki ground, very good evening. Uh, Finnair 7 Lima Tango, stand 26, uh, type A320. And uh, we've got information India, uh, QNH 994, request clearance to Copenhagen. Finnair 7 Lima Tango, you are clear at the Copenhagen runway 04 right, noon to 4 Charlie, the Palitsure, initial climb 4,000 feet and squawk 2217. Clear to Copenhagen runway 04 right, noon to 4 Charlie departure, initial climb 4,000 feet and squawk 2217, Finnair 7 Lima Tango. Finnair 7 Lima Tango. Clearance. Correct. Okay, dokie. Lovely stuff. That's everything we needed. We don't need to read back that part. 2217 is our squawk. Uh, we'll contact the remote de icing supervisor. Uh, remote up from 8 to uh, Let's just give it a second here, make sure we're not going to step on anyone. Get the jetway disconnected as well. Oh no, it already was disconnected. Okay. Finnair 6 Maclima, which stand number for the icing? Finnair 6 Maclima, I will give that uh, not later. 
We'll start the APU as well whilst we're doing this. And, and this is this is Dan Owen, 632, with you, uh, requesting for the item, please. Scandinavian 632, good evening, hi, listen to the icing. Uh, the icing on remote April 9th. The icing on April 8th, and Scandinavian. Uh, April 8th, as we expected. Helsinki D icing, uh, very good afternoon. Finna 7 Lima Tango, uh, request the icing for Wings and Tail. Finnar 7 Lima Tango, hello. The icing on April 8. April 8, uh, Finna 7 Lima Tango. Alright, great. Finna 6 Mark Lima, we are uh, ready for taxi. April 8, as expected. And uh, that's lovely. Right, so we'll go ahead and do the uh, the briefing now for departure. Lovely. Right. APU is available. We'll start the chrono as well. Cool. So we'll do our departure briefing, and then we'll uh, we'll go ahead and uh, request a push and start. Well, we'll do our checklist, and then we'll do a push and start. Okie dokies. So, um, we are departing from Helsinki, Finland, Vanta Airport. This is a 10-9. And uh, for the taxi, uh, we'll not look at this in too much detail, but uh, we'll come over here to the 10-9 alpha chart. Uh, so, we're currently at stand 2-6 here just by the uh, control tower. Um, so, for the taxi, we're going to actually taxi for de-ice to apron 8, as we said earlier on. That's what we were expecting. Uh, so that's down here. These are the de-icing stands. This one, this one, this one. And uh, I believe, well, I think this is all sort of one de-icing bay here. Um, so we are going to most likely be asked to push back facing to the southwest um, onto Alpha Charlie. We'll taxi down Alpha Charlie and then I'm not sure if he'll actually turn us out this way or have us continue down the apron. It's uh, a bit unsure, but I imagine he will probably swing us out this way so that he can, any other aircraft can push back if needs be. Um, but I suppose it depends on the traffic situation. Um, nevertheless, uh, we can probably expect Alpha Charlie, Alpha Golf, um, Victor Golf, and then a left on to Zulu. Following Zulu down, all the way down here, and then we'll probably get a left turn, Victor Romeo or Victor Sierra uh, for the holding point, Victor Sierra 1 or Alpha Victor 1 there. Those are the holding points for the de-ice. And then at which point we'll contact the uh, de-icing uh, supervisor who will give us taxi clearance to go on to a uh, de-icing stand. And we'll obviously make sure we need to select it through the GSX menu once approaching. Um, and then once we've been de-iced, um, we can uh, continue taxi outwards. Uh, we'll come back onto the ground frequency. Um, actually, that's one thing I did want to just check here. Yeah, we'll go to the tower frequency after de icing is completed and we'll request a taxi out. And we'll most likely just get taxied uh, either to Zulu Sierra or to Zulu Tango for the departure for zero four right. And then we'll depart at uh, 04 right, uh, being cleared for the Nunto 4 Charlie departure. This is the 10-3 X-ray chart. Airport elevation here, 180 feet and transition altitude 5,000. This is our nav departure. I need to maintain tower frequency until passing at 1,500 feet and then contact Helsinki Radar, who is online. Um, and then at first contact with Helsinki Radar, report SID and all radar, all radar heading given by ATC and level. Um, right, and then we've got after takeoff, climb as rapidly as possible to at least 2,180. NADP one departure procedures, as we said, so that is fine. We've already accounted for that. Um, and then looking further down at the uh, departure itself, it's initially straight ahead 038 track, and then a left turn after Hotel Kilo 416 to Mulab. 250 knots is a max speed at that uh, fix, no matter the altitude. And then a left turn to Hotel Kilo 911, and then a left turn out to uh, Nunto for the departure. Initial climb clearance, 4,000 feet, and then uh, that's it. We haven't uh, been given a different clearance, of initial clearance of 4,000 feet for this departure. 
Right, that is it. APU's nicely warmed up now. I think we can go ahead and uh, request a... Uh, request a pushback. So, we'll go to the... Currently on with delivery, 118125. Uh, so, we'll actually go to the ground controller, 1218 now. Get the external power off and the fuel pumps on. Uh, APU is nicely warmed up now, so we'll start the APU bleeds. Lovely. Right, so let's do the cockpit preparation checklist. So gear pins and covers are removed. Uh, fuel quantity is 6.7 tons. Seatbelt signs are on. Adairs are in nav. Bar F is set. 9 and 9 are 4. And that is a copy of preparation at checklist. Okay, dokie. Let's request a. We'll get the tug connected actually before we request it. Uh, jet time 1661, taxi via Alpha Delta Zulu to holding point Alpha Victor 1. Uh, taxi to holding point Alpha Victor 1 via Alpha Delta and Zulu, uh, jet time 1661. Scottish guy, welcome to the chat. Hope you're doing well. And Finner 884, Foxtrot, ready to pack the Alpha. Finner 888. Poor parking, whoever parked this aircraft last. Alpha Delta, Zulu, to hold the Alpha Victor 1. Via Alpha Delta, Zulu to Alpha Victor 1, Finner 884, Fox. Ground, very good evening, afternoon rather. Finner 7, Lima Tango, stand 26, ready for push and start. Start up and push back approved facing southwest. Start up and push back approved facing southwest. Finna 7 Lima Tango. Scandinavia 632. Right, southwest. facing southwest. Uh, push back is approved for southwest. Right, uh, before start checklist. So, parking brake is currently set. Takeoff speeds and thrust 505051. Flex of 55 degrees. Windows are closed. I think I've forgotten to close the cockpit door. I have. Let's close that one. And the uh, beacon light is on. Four star check is complete. We're going to go southwest. And because there is a bit of contamination around on the ground here, we'll wait for the full pushback to complete before we actually um, uh, start the engines. So, GPU chocks, and we'll release the parking brake. Release parking brake. Please comment in push. Due to icing conditions. Put the transponder on. Okay, okay, off we go, chats. Off we go. What am I doing? What am I doing? Um, play Microsoft Flight Simulator. Uh, but thank you very much for the sub. Right, okay then.
Turkish 737 there, very nice. Okie dokes, parking brake is set. Right, we'll go for an engine start now. So engine mode selector two, ignition starts. I'll go for a start number two. Ignore that sound, it should go away momentarily. I have GSX? Yes, I do, Dragos, yep. That's GSX making that funny sound now. <laughs> I think they still need to do some improvements. You see the wheels like spinning like crazy. I think they need to uh, do some improvements on that one. There we go. <laughs> One problem, I contact the icing one three three decimal eight five zero. Contact icing one three decimal eight five zero. Anyone, Pavelina? Left is clear, right is clear. Where's she gone with the pin? Right, engine two is available. Let's go for number one. There's a pin. Whoa, what is going on with her eyes? <laughs> what? <laughs> Do you guys see that? When I zoom into a certain level, it looks like something's like her eyes are popping out of her eyeballs. Right, brakes hot. That's because of GSX. So we'll just go ahead and clear that off. Delta Juliet, Yankee, and Zulu to holding point Zulu Romeo. Delta Juliet, Yanko, Yan uh, Yankee, and Zulu to oh, golf uh, Zulu Romeo for and off 99 and 2. Right, there we go. Two good engine starts. Lovely stuff. Engine mode selector two, normal. We're going to arm the ground spoilers. We're not going to set the flaps now because we are expecting some potential snowfall and uh, we don't want that to get in the flaps, etc. whilst uh, we are on the taxi out here before we're de-iced. So we're going to leave the flaps as they are for now, um, but we'll continue on. Uh, we'll, we won't do a flight controls check just yet either. Um, we'll wait until we're ready at the runway to do that. Uh, we will set the trim, however. So that's going to be 29.8, which is going to be about there. Should be down at 0.3. That's set. Uh, Ecamm status will check as well. We'll set max auto brake. It's going to turn the terrain display on as well. Everything is set here. That's looking good. Coming up top, we'll turn the APU bleed off and the APU master. And we'll turn the engine anti-ice on as well. Uh, one two three eight five zero. Just sign one two three five. Scan eight eight for de-icing. Sorry, just stick up the Okie dokie then, chats. After start checklist, anti-ice engine only. Ecam status is checked. Pitch trim is set to twenty eight point nine percent. Rudder trim is neutral. After start checklist complete, we'll leave the taxi checklist until we actually get to the runway holding point uh, again because we can't do the flight controls check just yet. Right. Finnair 7 Lima Tango request taxi to uh, de-icing, apron 8. Finnair 7 Lima Tango, taxi via Victor Golf Zulu to holding point Alpha Victor 1. Taxi via Victor Golf Zulu to Alpha Victor 1, Finnair 7 Lima Tango. Finnair 884 Foxtrot, contact the icing 133 decimal 850. The icing on 133 850, Finnair 884 Foxtrot. So that's Victor Golf Zulu 
to holding point uh, Alpha Victor 1. So that is as we expected, basically. So it's a right turn out here and then a left turn along the side of the runway uh, to the holding point. Right, taxi lights on. Coming from right to left. Let's go, chats. Oh, you can't find any message. Oh. What's your uh, what's your Discord username? Maybe maybe I said it to the wrong person. Sasha's holding here, so we're not going to accelerate too much. Do have some contamination around as well, so we're going to keep taxi speed quite low. I think that's an Antonov there as well, by the way, chats. <laughs> Lots of Antonovs on Vatsim at the moment, obviously, for obvious reasons. Right, so, as we briefed... Antonov 992, contact tower, 118 decimal 6. Overall 1186, thanks for the service, have a great evening, Antonov 992. It's right turn Enjoy the flight. to Victor Golf and then left onto Zulu. This right here. <laughs> She's freezing her eyes out. Brilliant. <laughs> exactly. Right, so you can see on the ground here Alpha Victor. And then we want to go Alpha uh, Victor Golf just around this corner. Uh, Scottish guy, I'm doing very well, thank you. Yeah, how are you doing? Victor Golf there on the sign. Some of the taxiway signs are a little bit mucked up here though because of my uh, real taxiways add-on. That's probably my fault. Dave, welcome to the chat. Hope you're doing well. Hope you're having a nice holiday. Don't know if you're back yet, but uh, welcome, dude. Oh, you're back. It's freezing. Yeah, it is really cold at the moment, isn't it? It's cold here in Helsinki as well, by the looks of things. <laughs> Just on our way to get de-iced on Vatsim. Absolutely love it. So next thing, chat, we're going to get handed over to the uh, de-ice uh, supervisor. And then we shall, um, they shall, they'll give us a taxi clearance onto a de-icing de stand. And then uh, we'll take it from there. There goes the Antonov, which doesn't look like an Antonov, but we can't do anything about that at the moment, unfortunately. It slowly does it. Yeah, it's quite sunny here in Helsinki, yeah. Is it via GSX? It is uh, aired, yes. And welcome to the chat, by the way. I hope you're doing well. Antonaut? <laughs> yes, that's the one. Uh, is it a new thing? Well, uh, not not overly, no. Not to uh, not to GSX. Um, the remote de-icing stands are relatively new. Um, but on Vatsim... Uh, Usually they don't have like a dedicated controller for the de-icing, which uh, they do today at this as part of this event. 
Uh, Beluga on PC. Good afternoon. Hope you're doing well. Good to see you. Welcome, welcome. Taxi speed's getting a little bit quick there. Coming downhill. So we're cleared to Alpha Victor 1. For the de-ice. Um, so we need to take a left onto Victor Romeo. And then onto Alpha Victor and then Alpha Victor 1. Helsinki Ground, hello, Air India 212, requesting push and start. Air India 212, start up on So we've got Victor Mike here. So it's our next. Our next left is Victor Romeo. Raven, welcome to the chat. Hope you're doing well. Welcome, welcome. Can you guys hear the ATC okay, by the way? Scandinavian 632, contact the ice in 133.850. This should be us, Victor Romeo. 2 aircraft at the de-ice already, that's super cool, is that? Fina 4, Mike, Whiskey, start up and push back up road facing southwest. Start up and push back up road facing southwest, Fina 4, Mike, Whiskey. Fina 7, Lima Tango. Contact the icing, 133.850. 133.850, Finna, 7 Lima Tango. Contact the icing, 133.850, Finna, 7 Lima Tango. Already got that pre-tuned. Scandinavian 632, Air Horns, Alpha Victor 1. Scandinavian 632, Victor. See how the icing stand. Eight one six. Eight one six. Very much for Scandinavian. Helsinki de-icing, Finnair seven Lima Tango. Uh, we're behind the Scandinavian approaching Alpha Victor one. Scandinavian seven Lima Tango. Hello again. Taxi stand eight one one for de-icing. Eight one one for de-icing, uh, Finnair seven Lima Tango. Eight one one chats. Right, so we'll come in to de ice. We're gonna go eight one one. And we don't need to follow me. Eight one one is the first stand, which is where the uh, Finnair is uh, currently, I believe. Scandinavian six three two one parking brake set. Contact the icing one two one decimal six seven five. Uh, turn, continue the ocean, uh, break, break set, contact one to one, does move, uh, six, seven, five, thank you much. We've already got them on this side. And Finar 7 Lima Tango, same for you, when parking break set, contact the icing, one, two, one, decimal, six, seven, five. I oh, know, there isn't anyone here. When parking break set, one, two, one, six, seven, five, Finar 7 Lima Tango. Right, this is 811 here. So we've actually got a, uh, a board in here as well, which will tell us when we need to actually stop coming into the sand. As you can see, there it is. It's got the correct flight number as well. Love to see it. A Y nine five nine eight eleven. Can't really see the sign though. <laughs> Scandinavian 632 with you at um, 816. Definitely not on the center line, but uh, that's fine. I blame the sign. It's so difficult to see. Right, parking brake is set. Okie dokes then, chat. So we won't contact them just yet. Uh, we're going to do the um, de-icing checklist. So coming up top, uh, we're going to go ahead and turn the engine bleeds off. 
Uh, we'll press the ditching push button as well. And we'll come down here and just make sure the outflow valve valves are closing. And on here, you can see the outflow valve closing there. Uh, we'll check the mo pressurization mode selector is in automatic, which it is. And thrust levers are in idle. Great stuff. So before the ice checklist is done, uh, we'll leave that caution on just to remind me what I've done. <laughs> and we'll contact uh, the ice. Helsinki de-icing, uh, very good afternoon. Finna 7 Lima Tango, parking brake set, uh, requesting one step de-icing, four wings to stabilizing, may start spraying. Good evening, Finna 7 Lima Tango on stand 811, de-icing. Stopping one step procedure for wings and stabilizer, report when de-icing is completed. Wilco, Finna 7 Lima Tango. And, uh, Lovely, here come the de-ices. Um, We're just going to go for a type 100% because that's what I'm going to guess what they're going to use because it's not currently snowing. There she blows. Jordan, welcome to the chat. This is pretty cool, isn't it, chat, really? This is pretty cool. Am I doing the event? Yes. Yeah, we are. I'm pretty sure the, the vehicles should come up from behind the aircraft, not the front, but I don't know. Maybe it's... One, concentration at 100%. I am disconnecting. Good day. Right, there we go. De-icing is uh, more or less complete. We're going to go for the hold over time start for the actual... for Vatsim, for when he tells us. Um, so... Scanavian, DRC is complete. Last station calling, please repeat your call sign. Scanavian, 62, DRC is complete. And it says exit now. Scanavian, 632 on stand 816. DRC completed for wings and tail with type 1 fluid mixture, 35 persons. Hold over time started at 32. Post D and anti icing checks are completed. We'll start the chrono now. For the hold over time. Scanning event 632 for taxi contact tower 118 Bye bye. Contact tower 118 Finnair 7 Lima Tango stand uh, 311 de icing complete. Finnair 7 Lima Tango on stand 811 de icing completed for wings and tail with type 1 fluid mixture 35 persons. Hold over time started at 31. Both the end and the icing checks are complete. Concentration 35%, uh, hold over time at uh, 3 2, Finna 7 Lima Tango. Finna 7 Lima Tango, hold over time at 3 1 for taxi, contact tower 118 Mosfix, bye bye. 
Apologies, correction. Hold over time starts at 3 1 and uh, 1186, uh, Finnair 7 Lima Tango. Correct. Bye bye. Bye, thank you. Right. Okie dokies then, chat. So, after de icing uh, checklist, we'll get both the engine bleeds on. Ditching push button will turn off and uh, we'll just observe that the, the outflow valve is now opening again, which it is. And the air conditioning coming back to life now. Lovely stuff. Wow, it has gotten toasty in the back there. Holy moly. Let's uh, just go ahead and just turn that down a little bit. Right. Okie dokies. So it was a type 1 fluid with a 35% concentration. Um, and like I say, the holdover time is not an issue for us because it's not currently snowing. Um, so that's absolutely fine. Oh no, I've just cancelled the chrono just instinctively. <laughs> Why did I do that? It was a, it was basically at two minutes anyway when I cancelled it, so that's fine. Right. Tower, very good uh, afternoon. Finnair 7 Lima Tango, we're at DICE 311. Uh, request taxi to uh, 04 right. So, Finnair 7 Lima Tango, taxi to holding point, Zulu Sierra. Text to holding point Zulu Sierra in S7 Lima Tango. As Zulu Tango, Zulu Sierra is here to our right. Can you repeat that frequency, sorry, for anyone private even? One two nine or decimal eight five zero. Unable contact one two nine eight five zero. Finna one private in the thing. Stay over six for two couple. Carlos, can I make one two nine eight five zero? Finna one private in the thing. Stay over six for two couple. Carlos, can I make one two nine eight five zero? Finna one private in the thing. Stay over six for two couple. That was super cool, chat, wasn't it? That was so so cool. Absolutely, really enjoyed that. Right, so now we've had the uh, de-icing complete. After departing point 737 on your right, line up runway 04 right and wait, intersection to the Sierra after. Uh, we just need one more minute before we're ready for departure, if that's okay, for now, 7 Lima Tango. For now, 7 Lima Tango, uh, line up clearance cancelled, hold position. Line up clearance cancelled, hold position, for now, 7 Lima Tango. Right, parking brake set. Um, right, so we'll do the uh, taxi checks now that we've been uh, de-iced. So flight controls check, so full left, full right, and neutral, full up, full down, and neutral. Full left on the rudder, full right on the rudder, and neutral. We'll set the flaps to 1 plus F. Uh, radar and predicted wind shear will turn on as well. Right, so taxi checklist, flight controls are checked, flap setting is config 1 plus F, we'll do a takeoff config test as well. Radar and predictive wind shear on an auto, engine motor selector is normal. Eco memo, takeoff and no blue, taxi checklist complete. Right. Finnair 7 Lima Tango, ready for departure at Zulu Sierra. Finnair 7 Lima Tango. Uh, he can go in front of me if he wants, um, that's uh, Finnair, I gave her enough gap if he wants. Right, lovely stuff. So we're just waiting here now. We've got Sash there ready for takeoff. We've got another Turkish here as well that's on his way. Very nice. Oh, a Tui behind us as well. Love to see it. Very, very good.
Uh, Flight Tim Sim, welcome indeed. Jordan, I don't know if I welcomed you, but welcome. I hope you're doing well. Adam, G. Oh, crikey, that was a spicy takeoff there. Do you guys see that? <laughs> Wait, what happened there? Oh, Sasha started rolling. <laughs> oh, dear, oh, dear, Sasha. Uh, Adam G, welcome to the chat. Hope you're doing well. Kensai, sorry I missed you earlier. Thank you very much for the 99 uh, euro. Uh, is it cents in euros? I can't actually remember, but thank you very much for your uh, your donation there. It uh, works out as 87 pence in British pounds. So thank you very much. Um, thank you very much. Appreciate your support. Thank you, Kensai. Uh, but someone asked earlier, is GSX worth it? Um, so, I mean, I suppose it depends. It's mostly superficial. Um, but the pushback is really quite good on it. I think the pushback is 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 worth a lot. But um, obviously, it's quite expensive overall as an add-on. Line up zero four right, right and uh, wait via Zulu Sierra Finna seven Lima Tango. Right, okay, chats. Strobe lights on. Yeah, so it is. Um, it is good GSX, but um, like I say, it's mostly superficial. What it adds, um, the pushback is great, um, but it, I don't know if it's worth the full price for that alone. Um, and it, it can be a little bit strange sometimes, a little bit unintuitive, a little bit buggy. Um, but it is quite good. It is quite nice. I, I feel like I do miss it a little bit when I don't have it. So, uh, yeah. Also, I think, um, Roy, I think you asked earlier on about the wing flex being an FS realistic thing. Um, yes and no. Yes and no. Right, just a sec. Lineup checklist. Um, li Runway 04 left is confirmed. Sorry, 04 right is confirmed. <laughs> Packs are on and TCAS TARI lineup checklist complete. Right, chat. Uh, so what I was saying, Roy, FS realistic, is the wing flex a FS realistic thing? So, like I say, yes and no. Um, basically, I, I think the breathing mode on FS realistic, it adds basically... It, it emulates the breathing by actually moving the aircraft around, so it kind of looks like you're breathing, and that's that's what it is basically. It's it's actually. When airborne contact radar one two nine zero more eight five zero wind three three zero degrees one two knots front way zero four right clear for takeoff. After departure one two nine eight five zero zero four right clear for takeoff. Finnair seven Lima Tango. Right, okay, we'll get that pre-tuned one two nine eight five zero. There we go. Right. Okie dokie then, chat. We are clear for takeoff. Fuzz Togas in the chat. Engines are stabilized. We'll reset the chrono. Let's go. Manflex 55 SRS runway auto thrust is blue. We have a, a bit of crosswind from the left. 100 knots. Flex is set. V1 rotates. Nav. Positive rates, gear up. Oh, we're a little bit off center line there, crikey. Yeah, that wind, uh, <laughs> it's quite difficult to handle there on the uh, rotation. Right, we'll go to uh, radar or 
Yeah, radar. Lever climb. Thrust climb. Auto thrust. Radar, very good evening. Uh, Finna 7 Lima Tango. Uh, passing 2004 4000 on the uh, Nanto 4 Charlie. Finna 7 Lima Tango has your radar ready contact. Flying flight level 280. Climb flight level 280, Finair 7 Lima Tango. Alright, cleared all the way up to 280 initially. That's very good. So we'll go ahead and set standards. So let's climb, climb. And we're accelerating. Flight level 280, blue. We'll disarm the ground spoilers. And, uh,. Oh, I forgot the landing lights. <laughs> Oopsies. We'll get the nose lights off anyway now. We'll release the cabin crew. And uh, ground spoilers are disarmed. Slow acceleration here. We've got uh, obviously NADP one departure procedures. So acceleration at much higher altitude or heights than uh, normal. Okay, S speed. Speed is checked. Flaps up. Go away, tips. Crossing your radar, Los Angeles, uh, 5 Charlie Papa, flight level 177, descending flight level 100. Hello, Los Angeles, 5 Charlie Papa, how's your radar contact? Um, descent flight level 70, and expect status approach, 0 for left. Descent flight level 70, expecting ILS 04, left, Los Angeles, 5 Charlie Papa. Beautiful. Any chance for a little bit higher turn rate? You are making about the uh, 15 mile radius of turn, and that normal radius is about 5 miles. Roger, copy that. We're going over and to see if you make a, bit, a higher rate for turn in. Roger that, copy that, and thank you much for going over and to see if you make a higher rate for turn in. Roger that, Beautiful. Three six three two. Contact three control one two one decimal three. Bye bye. One two one decimal three for standing over six three. Two. All right, flight level one hundred. Let's go AP two. We get the landing lights off now. See what signs off. And we're accelerating to 306 knots. Love, the, love to see it. And we're going to go to 1213 uh, next. Lovely. Leave the anti ice on for now. Great lighting, isn't it? Can I see you? Uh, no, Sasha, I can't. Beautiful. Beautiful. How do you get snow on the runway, says the Super Gamer. Well, when it, when it snows, usually. Um, some airports do get snow on the runway. Some of them don't. Obviously, it's not super realistic to have snow on the runway, um, but it, it all depends on the scenery and how it's made. 
Uh, but yes, Roy, that, is, ba that basically causes the flexing because essentially the FS Realistic, it's moving the airframe around. And obviously there is a slight bit of wing flex in the uh, Phoenix there. And obviously when the airframe moves, it, it just causes the wings to flex a little bit there. Uh, Raven, welcome to the chat. Yes, I am in the UK. Welcome indeed. Hope you're doing well. Um, is what free? Sebo, yes, it does look absolutely fantastic, doesn't it? Super, super nice lighting up here in uh, Finland. Uh, Elite Freemason Gaming, welcome. Good evening. I hope you're doing well. Welcome indeed. Welcome to the chat. Uh, default MSFS lighting. Uh, yeah. Yeah. I don't know if you can change the lighting at all. As far as I'm aware. One to one decimal three. Uh, finesse seven Lima Tango. Helsinki Control, very good evening. Finair 7, Lima Tango, passing flat level 160 for flat level 280, inbound Nunto. Yeah, 7, Lima Tango, Helsinki Control, radar contact, climb to flat level 380. Climb 380, Finair 7, Lima Tango. Right, we're outside of the icing range for the uh, temperature outside now. Oh, I'm being told off for not using my real name on Vatsim. Say again for seven Finesse seven Lima Tango. Finesse seven Lima Tango, proceed direct recto. Direct recto, uh, Finesse seven Lima Tango. Right, recto. Little right turn. Lovely stuff. Right. Right, okie dokes. <laughs> so aside from being told off on for not using my real name on Vatsim there. <laughs> or a valid name as they called it. Um, <laughs> right, cleared up to flight level 380, flight level 380 blue. And we're on our way. Anti-ice is off now as we're outside of the uh, icing range of temperatures. And uh, we are ready to rock and roll. Oh, crikey, got a bit dark then. Oh, beautiful. Just surfing the clouds. Love to see it. Fantastic. Um, get my PDC. Um, I've already got pre-departure clearance there, Sasha. Or do you mean CPDLC? I suppose that's what you mean, isn't it? Um, 1213. Yeah, let's do it. Let's do it. So. Uh, 
Uh, Ethan. going to disconnect and reconnect for a second there so that this guy can right sorted All right, let's connect. Did I notice a frame drop in DI sync? No, not really, no. GSX takes very, very little amount of frames away. To be honest, it's very, very good on frames, GSX. Yeah, no real issues with frames. The biggest hitter on frames is AI. Or Vatsim traffic. Same thing, I suppose. Uh, was I using my stage name? Yes, I was, uh, Dave. Yeah, I did. I mean, I, I see loads of other people not using their real name on Vatsim 2. Um, so, yeah, I, I decided to change it to that. I only changed it recently as well, funnily enough. I've, I've always used my proper name on there for such a long time now. But I thought, you know, I see so many other people. I see so many other people not using their real name. And um, I thought, you know, cause, because I'm obviously streaming the sim a lot, um, you know, just for a bit of privacy, I thought maybe I'll just change change it to, uh, to Bobby Fuzzy rather than my actual name. Just to, um, I don't know, I suppose just have, you know... A, a, it wasn't for self-promotion or anything like that. It was more for uh, uh, from the privacy aspect. Um, but anyway, I've changed it back now. Lovely. Log on accepted. Lovely stuff. Okie dokes. So we're rocking and rolling chat. We're looking good. Do, 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 do. They might kick out for 24 hours. Uh, you mean they might kick me off for 24 hours? Don't you mean, Sasha? Well, if they do, they do, but hey ho. Uh, it's changed now anyway, so. Um, but nevertheless, it's not a big deal. Um,. I can live without it for 24 hours, I suppose. <laughs> uh, we are streaming tomorrow as well, by the way, chat. Um, in case uh, you didn't see the schedule earlier this week. Uh, we're going to be doing a rather interesting fight tomorrow, actually. Now, I scheduled, I scheduled it for 1500 Zulu initially. Uh, but I might change the timings on that slightly. I'm not 100% certain on that time just yet. Uh, but we are going to be... Um, Tomorrow we're going to be doing a bit of an interesting route. So Dio, who's not with us today, but um, um, he is, um, yeah, he's been requesting for quite a long time now for us to fly into Sion, um, or Sion, should I say, sorry, in the uh, Swiss Alps. Uh, apparently the approach is, uh, well, it's, it looks like a really, really cool Arnav approach. Um, so I'm thinking what we're going to do is we're going to get back in the 737-700. It's been quite a while since we've been in that one. And uh, we are going to fly the BBJ variant. Um, I'm going to fly it from uh, an airport on Corsica. Um, I can't remember what the name of the airport is actually, but it's just... Oh my days. What the world just happened... Uh, I guess there was a weather update in the sim, maybe? Crikey. That was madness. Ah, uh, look, you, see, you can see it's the same thing happened to them as well. <laughs> I think. <laughs> uh, 
Anyway, as I was saying, we're going to be flying. Um, uh, from Corsica over to uh, Sion, and then if we've got time, over to Innsbruck as well afterwards. So a lot of very taxing, mountainous valley approaches uh, tomorrow. So it should be great fun. I'm going to try and do it on VATSIM as well. Um, so it should be great. Yeah, looking forward to it. Hope uh, Dio can join us for it. Anyway, um, Roy, um, I did ask you a question on on uh, on Discord, but I can just ask you now, really. Um, probably be easier. But I'm looking at potentially getting the uh, Ryzen 5800X. Uh, yeah, 5800X 3D. Um, well. I want to attempt to try and get it within the next maybe uh, month or so. Um, so I'm just wondering uh, what kind, what uh, wattage is your your power supply? Because you have the you have the same uh, graphics card as me, don't you? You have a 3080. So I'm just intrigued to see what what wattage your power supply is. Uh, they're doing VATSIM check or do you think report you? Um, no, I, don't, I mean, if they want to report me for that, then fair enough. Whoa, my days, what is going on? What is going on with the weather? That's crazy. We nearly oversped then as well. Right. Well, it's recovering. Jeez Louise. Two jet one two five hell, thank you, control radar contact. Clancy flight level three six zero. Right, let's see. Do we have any controllers on over Sweden? No, we don't. So we're going to come to the end of our ATC coverage probably just shortly after Recto. And then uh, we do have some controllers on at Copenhagen. Um, but only the tower and the, uh, well, the tower control at the moment. We do have a Copenhagen control on as well, uh, who we should probably contact on the descent. Lovely. Well, that was super, super cool, wasn't it, chat? That was super, super cool doing the de-ice procedure. That was super, super cool. I did enjoy that. Alaska 1314, Helsinki control radar contact. They're about 15 degrees, of course, so turn left by 15 degrees, of course. Total left. Peter, welcome to the chat. Hope you're doing well. Welcome, indeed. Uh, you've got an 850 watt power supply. Very good. I think I've got an 850. I'm not sure. I might have a 750. I'm sure I've got an 850 though. I think it's an 850. Can't actually remember. Let me just check. Oh, yeah, it's a 750, yeah, 750. So, yeah, I think... Do you think that's going to be too close to the edge? For my uh, power supply, if i got a 5800X3D? Because I know it's got slightly higher TDP than the uh, than what I've currently got, the 5600X. Probably... Uh, I don't know, I feel like it'd be fine, but it's not much. Um, Aviator says, I recommend flying from uh, Ljubljana. Uh, I flew from there this morning. It's a very interesting airport. It's located in the middle of the mountains. Yes. Yeah, I have looked at that before, but I've just never really got around to it. But yeah, that's uh, on the list. On the list of places to fly to, 100%. Yeah, but thank you very much for the uh, recommendation there, Aviator04.
Oh, it happens to you every flight, Aviator Crate. Wow. That's crazy. I did a... F I, 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 I mean, it doesn't happen to us too, too often anymore. Um, but yeah, it's strange to have it happen twice in the space of a minute or so. Five minutes or so. Twenty hour, four hours of VAT sim at Copenhagen. Oh, I see. Right, but when does it? When does it actually? When are they expected to arrive there? Let's have a look, because I'm not seeing too much traffic in that region at the moment. Where are they flying from? They're flying from like uh, in the Middle East, somewhere around there. Oh, wow. No, I see a lot of traffic going from Casablanca to Frankfurt. There's tons of traffic going from Casablanca to Frankfurt, but... Let's see uh, too many arrivals for Copenhagen. It's 21 arrivals. Vector Stolia, Alaska 1314. Current heading 60 degrees, Alaska 1314. Okay. Sweden is on. So they are, fantastic. 1184. Lovely. All right. Well, let's have a look. See if I can find the VATSIM, uh, 24 hours of VATSIM. Are any of you guys doing 24 hours of VATSIM? I don't see any events scheduled for Copenhagen for 24 hours of that sim. But I don't know. Maybe I've missed it. But I think the Phoenix A320 will come to Xbox. Probably not now, unfortunately. Uh, World MC. Uh, mainly because it runs a lot of its uh, systems or displays uh, through the Phoenix app, which runs separately. So you have to run this uh, this Phoenix app separately as well at the same time. Um, and uh, yeah, I mean, there's obviously no way of running an external application like that on the Xbox, unfortunately. So I, I doubt it will. Sadly for Xbox flyers, because it is an absolutely fantastic aircraft, but that's the way they've done it, unfortunately. Uh, is a Phoenix Sim underpowered in takeoff and climb? Um, I couldn't really say, uh, Chilqui. It doesn't feel underpowered in takeoff and climb, but I, I, I don't know the actual figures off the top of my head. I mean, let's see if we can find them. Airbus A320, CFM. Climb. Right. Helsinki gives uh, afternoon 0621 with your level 350. 
That's probably our handover. Sweden Control, 184. Lockheed 8 Bravo for 0 4 left, 0 6 2 1. 0 2 6 Sweden, good evening. Oh, Cruise, Mac. 0 2 6 4. Scandinavian 2 7 6. Last station transmitting all distortion, check your microphone. Yeah, sorry, sorry. Universal Cargo 7 Papa Mike Meet me at flight level 340. Oops. Universal Cargo 7 Papa Mike, good evening, score 5355. 5355, 7 Papa Mike. Spring Control, Fin Air 9 Alpha Junior, flight level 370. Uh, he's logged us off as well, very good. In uh, Niner Alpha Juliet, good evening, squad 5346. Just waiting for a second to speak, chat. 5346 in Niner Alpha Juliet. Sweet. Sweet. Control uh, Wizard 226, uh, climbing level 350. Break, break. Uh, Universal Cargo, 7 Papa Mike. Uh, when ready, descend level 2, Niners. Zero. Expect zero one right. Ready to descend flight level two nine zero. Expect uh, zero one right. Uh, Universal cargo seven. Papa Mike, thanks, sir. Been a seven Lima Tango. Did you call? I did indeed, yes. Uh, good afternoon, Sweden. Uh, Finesse, 7 Lima Tango, flight level 380, inbound Elvix. Been a seven Lima Tango, identified. Right, lovely stuff. Cool. So. EC5020 with the flight level 370. EC5020, good evening. Recycle transponder 5376. Squawk King 5376, EC5020. Hello, Sweden, uh, we're there at 226, uh, climbing flight level 350. Lisa 226, good evening. Squawk 4471. Squawk uh, 4471, Lisa 226. Sweden, Scandinavian 1716, I'm bound Kenax, uh, climbing through 5500 feet. Okay, 1716, Sweden, hello, identified, climb flat over 280. Flight level 280, Scandinavian 1716. With uh, break, break, with uh, 226, identify. That'll be a set chance. Let's try to see if I can find anything in the uh, the Airbus manuals regarding the uh, expected performance figures. When reach, uh, when on heading one. I'm sure there is something in here. Flight level 350. Break, break. Fina 9 Alpha Juliet, identified level 370. Order Fina 9 Alpha Juliet. Oh my god. <laughs> Adobe Reader. Oh, the keybinds. Fina 1 Bravo Lima, are you with me? Fina 1 Bravo Lima, go ahead. Fina 1 Bravo Lima, recycle transponder 3420. Sesquark 3420, Fina 1 Bravo Lima. Sweden Control, hello, Fina 6 Mark Lima with you. Fina 6 Mark Lima, good evening, Squawk 1211. One two one one for Squawk Finar six Mike. Finar one Bravo Lima Sweden Hello identified. Scanner seven two six Sweden Hello identified. Climb level three eight zero. 
break break easy five zero two zero three down low identified level three seven zero uh, i'm struggling to find anything to be honest uh maybe i'm not looking hard enough Back, back, Fina 6, Mike Lima, Sweet Hello, identified level 3, 6. But yeah, I mean, in short, I don't think it seems underpowered, really. I mean, it generally does its climbs as expected, really. Sort of 2,000 feet per minute initially, 2,300 feet, uh, 2,000, 3,000 feet per minute initially for the initial climb segment, and then uh, going to more like one to 2,000 for the rest, and that's pretty standard i think to be honest with you i mean like i say without cross-referencing with with the figures um it's difficult to say but for for 100 for but i'm fairly certain that that seems about right uh to be quite honest i mean um i don't really see many people complaining about about that um either so i'm, I'm I'm not really sure that it's it's um it's a huge if it is off if it's off by a lot. China Southern five zero four one Sweden Hello identity five level three four zero. Yeah, it's going to take me forever to try and. Sweden Control Ryanair six three Kilo good afternoon twenty miles outside Pednor flight level three five zero. Runner 63 Kilo Sweden Hello, good evening, Squawk 5302. Oh, maybe I found something here, hang on. Sweden Control, good evening, this is Europa 245, with you. Europa 245, Sweden Hello, identified, climb flight level 280. 280, I love it. Mm, no, nah, I suppose it doesn't really. There is some data regarding performance, but it's not actually. It doesn't really give you a, a, a climb rate as such. It's just giving you the uh, fuel time and distance, etc. Um, which I don't really have to hand for this flight. Let's see though, for cruise. Well, cruising at max seven eight. Seven Papa Mike, clearance and Neil to Mike for runway zero one right. Descend flexible one. So we're cruising at Mac point seven eight. Temperature is minus uh let's see, sorry. Weight is sixty three tons. Wind is uh well November it's about Hotel Golf, readability 2 by 5 Ident Well, we've got a straight crosswind there. With the slight tailwind component, so I'm just going to say 0. And we're at flight level 380. So, Mach points... Mach points 787 should be expected, so it's cruising a little bit lower speed than perhaps what it should do. But, yeah. I don't know. I mean, they're working on a big version two with an engine rework, etc. So, um, potentially they will they will fix it. Or something like very mechanical. Right. Uh, let's see. Uh, MPS has a Corsair 1600 watt. Very good. Uh, silent. Great. Yeah. I mean, I think um, this, the PS the PSU I've got is is, is relatively quiet. Um, but uh. Yeah, 1600 watt. That is mad. That is a big, big power supply, isn't it? But that's great. That's great. Yeah, I, I really, really like to have a quiet PC, but my GPU is quite loud, to be honest, which is sad.
Uh, I think Phoenix Sim is also working on the 320 with the big winglets. Uh, yeah, it's working on the... Yeah, they're called sharklets, aren't they? Proceed direct Charlie Hotel at 731. Proceed direct to... Uh, oh, we've got lots of traffic on the frequency. That was that was a, a nice little announcement you made there. Descend 5,000 feet when ready on QNH 1014. 184. Let's get him on CPDLC because that's going to make it a little bit easier for him and for us. Two two one two five zero. Hello, I identify level three six zero. Fina Alpha Juliet, uh, Sweden. Go ahead. Uh, Fina Alpha Juliet, uh, it seems that you are doing warp speed. Confirm you are flying normal speed. <laughs> uh, yeah, flying normal speed Someone's now. going warp speed. Yes, if you need warp speed, you need to request uh, in, in advance, not uh, on discretion. Okie dokie, sorry. Yes, and maintain level 370. Maintain flight level 370. Log on accepted, good, good. Yeah, so you're now almost at 380, so descend level 370 uh, altitude, QNH 1013. Um, anyway, how do I get custom cameras around the flight? Um, uh, how do I get custom cameras? Well, uh, mainly what I do, I mean, you can set up your custom cameras by using the custom camera key binds. There's literally a, a key binding that says uh, save custom camera, and then you can recall it with a key bind. Um, but what I tend to do is I tend to um, actually set up some... Um, a custom cameras.config file for my aircraft. Five, three, two, one, Scandinavian, one, seven, two, one. Jet time seven, six, zero, contact uh, Copenhagen. Uh, but yes, Phoenix are doing the Sharklets, uh, Chilqui, for this aircraft. They're doing the Sharklets, they're doing the IAE I engines as well, um, which should be nice. Contact Copenhagen, one, two, one, this is three, seven, five. Uh, it's because you switched from the fly-by-wire to the Phoenix. Well, you've got to bear in mind the Phoenix has... Um, sorry, the fly-by-wire has uh, slightly more powerful engines. And they're more efficient as well. So you've got to bear that in mind. Oh, crikey. What's happened again? Sweden, Finnair 7 uh, Lima Tango. Just had a slight uh, altitude excursion there. I think a weather update or something like that. We're returning to flight level 380. Finnair 7 Lima Tango, thank you. Right, let's see. Am I excited for the Aerosoft 330? Um, I'm, I'm certainly very interested in it, yeah. Uh, I don't know how excited I am about it. Um, <laughs> I mean, they've not really shown too much of it yet to get excited about, but um, yeah, I mean, I'm looking forward to it, that's for sure. I'm. Uh, as long as uh, as long as they do it to at least the CRJ standards, I think it'll be quite a nice add-on. Due to sequencing inbound Copenhagen, Mach point seven seven or less. Mach point seven seven or less, Finnair seven Lima Tango. All right, it's Mach point seven seven or less. All right, selected speed Mach point seven seven. We'll go Mach point seven seven. Uh, 1712, sweet identified. Right, Roy, so you're getting 180 watts from the uh, 5800X 3D, is that what you're saying? Crikey, I've got someone flying. Oh, they're just flying past us. Oh, there they are. Actually, quite far away. <laughs> it's because my zoom level playing tricks on me. Uh, are you excited for the Aerosoft 330 uh, uh, Gen C? Maintain 
maintain Mach 0.77. Alright, lovely stuff. Uh, Will MC is excited for the A and two two five next Sunday. Yeah, yeah, that should be really nice. Is it? Uh, is that when it's coming out for Xbox? Is it? Oh, we're flashing again. Go ahead, the standard is one seven one six. Okay, one seven one six. What is your intended maximum Mach number during cruise? Keep getting asked to maintain Mach 0.77. Let's slow down a bit. Maybe maybe he's reading us a little bit faster than what we're doing. Canada 716, maintain Mach 0.79er or greater during cruise. Traffic behind. Well, cool stuff. 79er or greater. Scanner maybe 1716. Europa uh, 245, speed up. Yes, this is Europa 245. Europa 245, speed restriction during cruise, Mach point seven eight or less. Uh, whatever power supply you got, make sure it has at least point, two 6 plus 2 separate PCI slot power connection. Uh, for a 3070, 3090, you will need three connections. Well, I've got, I've already got the 3080 connected to my PC, Patrick. I'm just thinking about, uh, I'm thinking, I'm just thinking about, um, I'm just thinking about changing the CPU, that's all. Seven fifty should work fine. Yeah, good, good, good. That's what I like to hear, Roy. That's what I like to hear. Kind of a two seven six. Are you, level, are you able a level four hundred? Uh, yes, able uh, four hundred. Uh, what route would you do on cross the pond? Uh, I'm not sure, Sasha. I haven't really looked at it yet. Due to traffic crossing uh, shortly from left to right, level three eight zero. Climbing flight level four zero zero. Scandinavian two seven six. Right, um, sorry chat, I keep getting torn away from reading the messages here. Um, but yes, that's what I like to hear. Universal uh, 7 Papa Mike, D San Flatable 7. That's what I like to hear, Roy, yeah. I'm pretty excited to get the, uh, the 50, 5800X3D. I think it should be quite a nice, nice upgrade. Because at the moment, I feel like, at least on my current graphics settings, um, my GPU is doing just fine, but my CPU is definitely could do with a bit more power, uh, especially when I'm on the ground. So, uh, Sasha, I'm doing Mac point seven six. I'm just going to leave it at this for now because that's Universal Cargo Seven uh, Bubble Mike and Number One about four seven track one touchdown. Thank you very much, sir. It's um, yeah. Even at Mach 0.77, I was still flying a little bit over, and he said fly 77 or under, so I'm doing fact Mach 0.76. And your speed is down to the controller. You can't do faster if the controller said not to. So, um, yeah, I'm just going to go by what the controller says because he can see what what separation we have better than better than we can. We're not on Unicom, so we have to obviously listen to the controllers here. Will MC, welcome indeed. Sorry I missed your initial message there. You play on Xbox, you do play on Xbox, so it does explain what you said earlier. Yeah, great stuff. The marketplace isn't good. Um, Well, yeah, that's unfortunate. Hopefully soon, you know, you should start to see some better planes coming to the marketplace with the uh, WASM support being released. At some point in the near future, hopefully it's not, not too long. Seven, one, 
Hopefully not too long. Um, yeah. Universal Cargo, 7 Papa Mike, turn left in 3, 2... Uh, don't buy a 39 to get better. Um, yeah. Well, I've just got a 3080 at the moment, MPS. Uh, I don't know if that you're referring to me there, but I'm not planning on changing my GPU, to be honest. Universal Cargo, 7 Papa Mike. Universal 7 Papa Mike, descend 5000, QNH 1004. 5004, Universal Cargo, 7 Papa Mike. Uh, why on the ground do you use speed in knots and in cruise you use Mac? Um, that's a good question, Quizzy, and something that I'm probably not very good at explaining, so I'm, I'm not going to try and explain it to you. <laughs> um, but it's... Um, in short, it's to do with the fact that when you're up at higher flight levels, usually around above flight level 250, somewhere around that, above anywhere above that... Um, um, basically, uh, because the air is thinner, um, measuring in, in knots is, is not as effective, I, I think. I, like I say, I'm not the best person to explain it, but it's basically because the air is thinner in a nutshell. And essentially, once you get to a certain altitude, your speed in knots will start to um, um, basically become a Mach number. Um, like I say, I'm absolutely terrible at explaining it. <laughs> Um, but yeah, it's essentially because the air is, is, is thinner and it's a better way to, to measure your speeds. Yes, uh, searching flight level 330, Papa Mike. Papa Mike, Papa Mike, Papa Mike, Papa Mike. But um, yeah, a Google is probably your best friend on that. I'm really, it's, 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 it's a topic that is probably one of my weaker areas, to be quite honest with you. Um, so I'm not going to attempt to explain it any further than that. Universal Cargo 7 Papa Mike, this is your straight in approach now for uh, runway 01 right. Do you need. Oh, look at that. Beautiful. Uh, negative, sir. I don't need 7 Papa Mike. Pass, uh, this is what FPS did I get on the ground? Um, I really don't know, to be honest, Dan. It was somewhere between 30 and 40, I think. Something like that. I don't really monitor my FPS too, too militantly. We'll get you. Black Club 4000, thank you very much. Seven Papa Mike. Um, let's see. Scan 2276, contact Copenhagen Control 121 decimal 3. Uh, the X3D works perfect with the 3080 because I got the uh, 4070, the X3800 X3D couldn't handle the speed of 4070, that's why I switched to Ryzen 7. Oh, I see, very good, very good. I see what you're saying, Roy. Nice, yeah, very good, nice. Oh, yeah, the X3D. Um, yeah, I'm looking forward to getting it. I think it should be a good pairing. I think the reason why I've only got 5600X at the moment really is because, like I've said to you guys before, I was I was extremely lucky at actually winning this 3080. So, um, so um, yeah, ultimately, uh, I kind of just bought a slightly better CPU than what I had at the time, just, just as a stopgap to try and get a bit more out of the GPU. Uh, really hoping to get a three, uh, uh, an A350 in Microsoft Flight Simulator. Yeah, hopefully there is one coming soon, but uh, yeah. Been there one, Bravo, Lima, when ready, descend. Yeah, I mean, I think there is a freeware project that's doing a 350, I think, but um, I'm not sure of any payware ones that are coming in the future. But yeah, it would be super cool to get that. Um, I was I was part of the Sim 4 Flight project, um, they were called. Um, they were working on an A350 for Microsoft Flight Simulator. Um, but um, they cancelled the project in the end. Um, they did pass their assets to another group that I can't remember their name of. But um, yeah, they ended up stopping the project, I think. Partially because of the fact that there's not that much information out there that's that's relatively easily available to create an A350 add-on for. Uh, I think one of the best and well, more the, the best way to get high fidelity A350 
for the sim would probably be to actually partner with Airbus and um, yeah, I mean that probably going to cost a lot of time and money I guess, but yeah, hopefully someone manages it at some point, that would be super super cool uh, 8350, probably one of my favourite aircraft to be honest, so yeah, I would love to see that right Universal Seven Papa Mike, wind is two nine zero at one three knots, wrong with zero one right, clear to land. What are my settings? What are my recommended settings for the thirty sixty? I don't know. It really depends on what add-ons you run in, where you are in the world. It depends on a lot of factors, really, Raven. It's I can't really give you a a recommended setting for that um it's really dependent on your own system you've just got to have a bit of a play around really um and obviously it depends a lot on your cpu as well and the, what, what resolution you're playing in there's so many factors it's just something that you've got to work with over time i think i mean i i, t I i've been using this simulator now since it released which is just over two years now and um yeah i mean it took me about maybe about six to eight months or something before i was finally happy with the performance i was getting um with my settings and in that time they did a lot of optimization to the sim and things like that as well so you know the, the goalposts were changing all the time so um yeah it took a while for me to get my settings nailed down but it's like i say it's something you've got to you've got to do um on your own is what i would recommend i think for that graphics card again it depends what resolution you're playing at Maybe high settings would be okay, but again, I, I don't really know. Um, would I recommend the uh, 5600X? Um, yeah, I mean, I, I think it is a great CPU. I, I think it works well for this sim. I mean, I've been using it quite happily for quite some time. When I'm flying in um, GA aircraft, you know, the performance I get in this sim is incredible. And same with the PMDGs. I get very good frame rates in those. And yeah, I mean, it's a great CPU. Um, but again... Um, oh, you've got a GTX 1660. Yeah, so... I don't really know um, that graphics card too well. Um, it is a great processor, but, you know, it, whether it's going to give you any gains is, is dependent on your own situation. So you want to just try and ascertain whether that your setup is GPU or CPU bound. So... That's going to depend a lot on what resolution you're playing in and um, what you do in the sim. So again, it's... Yeah. In this sim, it's uh, there's a little bit more to it than, um, than just upgrading a component and expecting a performance increase. Um, it's more about, you know, how the sim is performing on your system and then upgrading to, to suit that. I know for a fact my system is CPU bound for the sim, so this, my CPU is hampering my performance the most. So I know a CPU upgrade will actually um, will help me. Whereas if I upgraded my GPU now, it, it probably wouldn't be that big of an increase unless it was like a 40 series GPU, whereby I would uh, be able to use the frame generation. That would probably help, but just purely without that, I don't think it would make much of a difference. KLM one five four six is with hello identified, and uh, next time uh, be in the con contact with the ATC when they are calling you. This is an uh, online environment. You need to be online, otherwise you can fly offline, sir. Who is he talking to there? Skyman 632, CPDLC uh, service is terminated. When ready, descend level 290. 290 is PJC is terminated. Understand you are very busy. Descend to level 29,000 feet for the Skyman 6. 
kind of six three two not uh, that I am busy, but I'm unable to give you some clearances uh, due inbound Copenhagen with the CPDLC. Therefore, it's, it's terminated. Well, there's no worries for the Jan Avery and Secretary to send him out to like the little two nine of the. Um, Hitesh, I'm not sure on that, but I I don't think there's a lot of. Six three two on conversion, speed two nine or zero knots. Um, Hitesh, yeah, I'm not 100 percent sure on that. There probably is some data out there, but it's because it's a newer plane, it's it's not as readily available. There we go, Dave. There's a, there's a, a relatively short but. CPDLC services terminated. One ready G and level two nine zero. Ren ready, descend, uh, flight level 290, Finesse, 7 Lima Tango. Right, stay down to 290. We're not quite ready to descend just yet, so we're going to stay up here. Uh, but yes, there we go. So temperature and density of air decreases with altitude, so does the speed of sound, hence a given true velocity results in... Results in a higher number, Mach number at higher altitudes. Um, yeah, so that's one way to roughly explain the Mach um, situation. Europa two four five. Finland seven Lima Tango on conversion speed two nine zero knots. Yeah, you're going to stick to 1660 for a while since I can't get a new GPU. Finesse 7 Lima Tango. Finesse 7 Lima Tango on conversion speed 290 not. On conversion speed 290 Finesse 7 Lima Tango. Finesse 1 Bravo Lima clearance uh, Tidbo 1 Alpha uh, uh, disregard. Clearance uh, Tidbo 2 Alpha for runway 04 left. Descent flexible 100. One Bravo Lima, sorry, my pressure was bad. Right. One ready, flight level 100. One ready, flight level 100. No one Bravo Lima, no worries. EC502. So on conversion speed 290, and we're cleared down to flight level 290. So let's start going down. I'm going to turn the music down a bit now. For the arrival. We'll go to thrust idle open descent because we're not. We're flying on a selected speed. Would you be able to reconfirm the SID? Universal cargo. Uh, Seven Papa Mike. Taxi via uniform. To we'll go for a thousand feet per minute initially. Where uniform, uh, stand Romeo 10. Thank you very much, sir. Papa Mike. Uh, station uh, liked uh, then. Uh, Someone well. got schooled. Yeah, they really did, didn't they, Hitesh? <laughs> uh, arrival. Fine <laughs> one, Bravo Lima. Fine one, Bravo Lima. Uh, but yeah, cheeky Dan, I would, again, it would, I mean, if you're planning on upgrading your GPU at a later stage and you want to just go for a CPU now, that's probably not a bad choice. Microsoft Flight Simulator is, is well known to be CPU hungry, unless you've got, you know, 4K resolution, in which case uh, the GPU would be very handy, but I imagine you're not playing at 4K with that GPU. So a CPU will probably give you some decent gains, I imagine. Four left on the, um, on the Tango. Can you return leg? I'm probably not doing return leg, Sasha. Keep it short, keep it short. Paper and pencil. Tidwo 2 Alpha, 04 left, flight level 100. TC 2 Alpha, over my 4 left, and you should do flight level 10,000 feet. Fina 1 Bravo Lima, descend 5,000 feet, QNH 1004. Right, we have caught our profile now, so I'm just going to try and, and follow that profile with um, vertical speeds. Fina 1 Bravo Lima, descend 5,000 feet, QNH 1004. 
5,000 feet, can H1003043, if you know one, Beverly now. Yes, everyone, pay attention now, otherwise this will be uncomfortable and not fun. Right, so let's check the ATS then for Copenhagen. Uh, seven, uh, Lima Tango, clearance T22 Alpha, zero four left. When ready, flight level 100. Clearance uh, Tidvu 2 Alpha, 04 left, when ready, fly level 100, Finnair 7 Lima Tango. Tidvu 1 Alpha, good evening, it's flight 147, descending to flight level 290, inbound to Kukam. Lexar 147, Sweden, hello, identified, descend, flight level 160, clearance uh, Risma 4 Lima, runway 03. Descent flight level 160 and uh, clear for approach, uh, please not travel at uh, runway 03, uh, for 7. Right, cool. I'm just going to get the 80s up on my other screen as well. We'll have a quick read through it in a second. Right, so we've got the ATIS. In that one, Bravo Lima, contact Copenhagen with all 121. Information Juliet. 121375. Uh, 1720, so about half an hour ago. 04 left in use for landing. Echo stars, although we've just been given an alpha star, which is interesting. Um, Echo stars, Mike and November stars not available. Uh, visual approach on request, transition level 60. Winds 300 at 8 knots. Varying between 270 and 330, visibility over 10 kilometers, uh, broken clouds 6,400 feet, 2 degrees of temperature, minus 9 dew point, QNH1015. Right, let's get that in. QNH1015, uh, temperatures 2 degrees, uh, winds are 330 at uh, 8 knots, uh, sorry, 300. <coughs> at 8 knots. Transition level was uh, 6 0. Climbing final 370, was it 350 Yeah, cool. So that's all in. Great stuff. And then uh, we'll just amend our flight plan here slightly because we're doing a slightly different arrival. Uh, so 04 uh, left and actually, are we? No, TIDV2 Alpha, that's what we planned for. Okay, great. <laughs> for some reason, I thought we were doing uh, 04, we set up for 04 right, but I'm getting mixed up, aren't we? We, we, we departed 04 right at uh, Helsinki. Right, that's cool. Uh, we can do a visual approach on request. Um, but uh, we'll set up for the ILS initially. KLM one five four six leaving my airspace. Unicorn one two two with the small light. Right, so uh, so for the minimum. One seven one six, no ATC speed restriction. Three speed there, section in Scandinavian one seven one six. Europa two four five, no ATC speed restriction. Sorry, can you say again the speed? Europa two four five, no ATC speed restriction. So the speed is yours. Ah, okay, thank you. Speed is mine. We we'll plan to do a visual chat, shall we? Sweet control, good evening. So the minimum is going to be 780 feet for that. That's the circling minima, so... I would assume that would be the visual minima as well. There's nothing regarding visual minima. Well, visual... A visual minima is, is not really... Is not really... Is not really at any height, is it? It's, it's obviously... You need to be able to see the airport at all times to do a visual. That's your minima. 
Um, but we'll put the circling minima in there anyway, just for reference. That's kind of a six, a three, two, correction. We'll go for a config full landing. And uh, that's that. Okie dokes. Uh, Fly Jevier, welcome to the chat from Vegas. Good morning. Hope you're doing well. Welcome indeed. Right, all right, all right. Uh, what will a 240 hertz monitor do? Uh, well, it just increases your refresh rate on your monitor. So if you can achieve that a high frame rate, then you're going to have some very, very nice looking smooth visuals on, on your screen. But you have to be able to achieve a high frame rate. No ATC speed restriction. Speed is yours. No, it's see speed restriction, finesse, 7 Lima Tango. Right, great stuff. Okie dokes. So, uh, speed on conversion was uh, 290. We'll just go back to manage speeds. And we'll go back to manage descent as well. Speed des. Right. And then, what else do we need to do? Alright, so if we need to go around, uh, NADP 2 departure procedures here at uh, Copenhagen, so that is all correct. And the engine out acceleration altitude will be at 1600 feet. China Southern, 401. Right, okie dokes. It seems that you are in your neighborhood now, the only target is squawking standby. You should be squawking uh, Charlie. And you are Copenhagen airspace. Contact Copenhagen 121375. Uh, Let's just have a look what we've got in here. 1211, a decimal at 375, and a smoke mode Charlie. All right, that's good. Let's put in here EKCH04 left. And then we're going to do a briefing momentarily. Uh, 53 miles to go, so we're a bit high. I'm actually just going to go to open descent. Send 5,000 feet, QNH uh, 1014, Finnair 7 Lima Tango. All right. Contact Copenhagen Control 121, this is Matrice, number 5. Copenhagen approach 011, decimal 3, 75, AMX, we're standing in 6. We'll go to open descent, chat, because... Sky Navy. Stumble. Descending 55. I think the profile is not going to be perfect, is it, considering that vector's leg, so that's fine. Right, okay. Uh, Let's just ch chuck a couple of things in here. So we'll go EK CH04 left. And we'll put a 10 mile ring. Uh, 04 left. I'll put a 3 miler. Now I'm just going to put a uh, radial from that as well. Just an extended center line because we're going to try and do a visual approach here. Right, let's have a look. Make sure that's all in properly. That looks good. Great stuff. Okay, dokes. So we shall do a uh, briefing then, chats. We're probably going to get a handover momentarily. We'll, uh, we'll do a briefing for now. Uh, no return legs, Sasha, no. Who told me to change my name? One of the Vatsim supervisors. I don't know what the name was. Off the top of my head. Uh, Fly Tim Sim says... Uh... uh I didn't know about that actually. Align members to use a variety of proved name conventions which do not reveal a member's first name. Right, okay, I see Fly Tim Sim. So it's okay for me just to use my first name then. That's fine. Okay, great. Well, thank you very much for that, Fly Tim Sim. Appreciate that. Right. Okay, okay then, chat. Let's have a look.
at the arrival then. I'm gonna have to. I might have to stop speaking every now and again. Now and again, because I don't want to miss any fr uh, transmissions from this controller. Right. So we're arriving in Copenhagen, Denmark. This is an Arnav start. This is a 10-2 chart. Um, airport elevation 17 feet, and uh, we can expect vectors for base final. Um, at or before downwind. Um. We need to state the type of aircraft on first type of con to first contact with Copenhagen approach, and we need to say only call sign when we're on final. One two one three seven five in a seven Lima Tango. report when established. Copenhagen, very good uh, afternoon. Finnair 7 Lima Tango. Uh, we are passing flight level 100 uh, for 5,000 inbound Tidvu. Information Juliet, Type A320. Finnair 7 Lima Tango, Copenhagen, good evening. I identified. I expect Alice 1 way 0 4 left. QNH 1015. Expect uh, Alice 0 4 left. QNH 1015, uh, Finnair 7 Lima Tango. Low, right, flight level 100. Let's get the landing lights on. Seatbelt signs on as well. Right, sorry, chats. Carrying on with the briefing. So we're cleared for the Tidvu 2 Alpha, runway 04 left, uh, which is going to take us Tidvu to SJ Max 250, maximum flight level 80, which we are going to make. Left turn to Charlie Hotel 743 and then 737. Max flight level 60 there and then right turn Charlie Hotel 731. And then 724. Left turn to Dopen, max 220 knots there, maximum 4,000 feet and then on vectors from that point. Uh, I am going to request a visual approach in a moment. Um, so from there we're going to do a visual approach. Uh, so I'm not going to brief the ILS. And then we are going to arrive 04 left. We'll aim to vacate here, Alpha 7. Or Alpha 6. And then we'll taxi up Alpha and then to wherever he sends us. The real aircraft parked here. But I'm not sure he will send us there because obviously there's a lot of traffic at the moment so I'm just going to let him send us wherever he wants to send us. Um, so it's probably going to be a taxi alpha and then either alpha or foxtrot depending on where he wants to send us. So we're just going to do it that way because uh, it is quite busy. Well, only 18 arrivals but that should be fine. Um, in fact... I'll check, I'll check what stand we need and then maybe, um, maybe we can request it. So stand alpha two zero. So if we need to, if we get alpha two zero, that's up here. So it'll be alpha and then down either Zulu or Yankee onto Lima for alpha 20 here for the taxi it. Uh, speed 280 knots, um, the right. Knots, right heading okay. Uh, Is that Simple Pro? It was, yes, Sebo, yeah, with uh, with Navigraph overlay. Right, speed alt star. Speed's 250 knots, and we're meeting the restrictions there. That's all good. Right, okay, so approach checklist bar if you set 1015 on uh, both sides. We'll set it on the standby as well, of course. I'm just going to make sure that matches the sim. Sim is 1014. Uh, seatbelt, seatbelt signs are on. Minimums are set to 780 feet. Torture break um, we haven't done yet, but we'll go for low. Engine mode selector is in uh, normal. Approach checklist complete. Right, let's do the landing arrival perf even. So runway is 04 left, runway is dry. 
Landing weight is going to be 58.8 plus 3, so 50, 61.8. Lower to brake is going to be fine. Idle reverse, flap full, and uh, auto thrust off. Um, taxi to GIsing Alpha and crossing uh, 30. Great, can confirm by Quebec, Foxtrot, and Alpha, and you clockwise. Quebec, Foxtrot, and Alpha to uh, GIsing. Copenhagen radar, good evening, Red North 3. Right, we're, we're good, we're good, chat, we're doing quite well actually. We definitely descended quite a bit early there, but hopefully he'll give us, maybe he'll give us a, uh, he's not going to give us any shortcuts, is he? We've got someone in front of us, so, yeah, he descended probably a little bit quick there, but never mind. and expect zero for left, Tutlo 3 Alpha, Red North 3, 5, 1, 1. So eight three one eight, three two eight, speed one eight one eight or greater to six minus. Speed one eight zero or greater to six, uh, Tantara three two eight. Scrabbit six three two to the right heading three two zero, report field inside. Right heading three two zero, then report when inside for standard over six. Locked. Finna 7 Lima Tango, tonight heading 270. Right heading 270, Finna 7 Lima Tango. Scandinavia 603, request taxi. Okay, so he's giving us a little bit of a shortcut here, which is nice. 603, taxi by Lima, Shulu and Bravo, cross on me 30, holding point 0 for right. Alright, we'll put the LS push buttons on. We're not going to fly the ILS, but we'll use it for reference. I'm going to look for the last four. Okay, maybe 603, Lima, Zulu 1, Bravo, cross 30, 200.04, right. Okay, that's 632, descent 2,000 feet, speed 200 knots. Uh, speed 200 knots and descent 2,000 feet for standard over 632. Okay, that's it, uh, Blocked. Okay, that's 70 meters angle, descent 3,000 feet. Send 3,000 feet, Finnair 7, Lima Tango. Lot 416 identified, flight level 190, proceed direct to CMIC. VS 1000, 3000 blue. Correct, then proceed direct to CMIC. That is CMIC, Lot 416. Bravo Lima, well navigated. One Bravo Lima, thank you, hold short of check survey at Delta. Hold short of Delta, one Bravo Lima. I'm trying to spit. I'm trying to request a video visual here, chat, but I can't get a word in edgeways. speed <laughs> We're heading 310, uh, Finnair 7 Lima Tango. Can we request a visual approach? Hey, Finn, you will be number two. Uh, report field inside. Roger, will do. Uh, Finnair 7 Lima Tango. Fred knows 2762, contact Sweden, 118, this is my fault, by the way. 118, that's my force. Red knows 2762, good night. 19, Papa, yeah, getting a nice shortcut coming in here, chat. Um, looks better integrated than Volanta. Um, what do you mean by, uh, do you mean the Navigraph integration? It's just like a, it's essentially just a web browser over the top. Matrasa, welcome. Guys, I'm probably not going to get to speak much here because I don't want, I don't want to miss his uh, transmissions. Thank you, copied Vinay, 7 Limitango. 
Flight 416, contact Sweden, 1184, bye-bye. You can repeat, Flight 416? Flight 416, Sweden Control, 1184, bye-bye. We don't have any other controllers on at Copenhagen at the moment. It's just this guy. That's why he's so busy. So we are just going to stick with him. Right. Approach phase is active. There's the airport. Finesse 7 Lima Tango, feel inside. Finish 7 Lima Tango is number 2, Gantt 320 on final now. Cleared right hand, we should approach on me, 04 left. Cleared right hand approach uh, behind the arriving aircraft, uh, 04 left. Finesse 7 Lima Tango. Right, clear for a visual approach chat, love to see it. We'll start a very, very shallow descent initially. Copenhagen, good evening, Scandinavian 6 Kilo, Papa Flat Level 330 to Scandinavian 6 Kilo Good evening to you. You're identified. Scandinavian 4 and 8 Unicom 1 to 2 8 4 to 8 Unicom Scandinavian 4 1 8 Good afternoon. Scandinavian 6 is on their 4 mile final now. Scandinavian 6 3 2 Roger. Clear to land 0 4 left. Wind 3 2 0 degrees 8 knots. Clear to land 4 4 left for Scandinavian 6 3 Right. Laps one, speed is checked. Scored Go around altitude 3,000 feet. Can we leave on the lane at the uh, area Alpha ready for taxi to... Uh, and flap straight to... Oh dear, oh dear. Taxi via Alpha, Delta, what happened there? Delta, Crikey. 40.04 right. Alpha, Toyota, Charlie, Bravo, Delta, Charlie, Bravo, Charlie, Bravo, Charlie, Bravo, Charlie, Right, I have the controls. Flaps two gear down. Okay, and flaps three, speed is checked. Copenhagen, easy nine four pop kill of Fox Lot One, ready for. We're a bit high currently, but we've got a bit of height to play with, so. Facing west. Facing west, approved. Not too concerned. And flaps full, speed is checked. Flap set to full, alarm the spoilers. Landing checklist, decam memo, landing no blue. Landing checklist complete. Stand of choice, via Fox Pot, Scandinavian 276. Need to pay attention to what I'm doing here. Right, flight director's off. Track FBA on. Right at 6 Lima Victor, good evening to you. Clearance is to Dublin, Bump D5, Alpha Departure, Romney 27, Squawk 2054. Right, looking good, 1000 feet, we are stabilized. Hundred above. Autothrust disconnects. Minimum. Continue. Fosavia three two eight. Continue by six B. Fox two Yankee and Victor. To stand Fox two seven. Continue by Fox two Yankee and Victor for stand Fox two seven. Fosavia three two eight. Thank you. We're a bit high here, chats. Recovered it. Four hundred. Finesse seven Lima Tango short final. 
Two four left, clear to land, finesse, seven name in tango. Crikey. Oh, I forgot to record a replay chat, god damn it. One hundred. Fifty. Forty. Seven six zero three on visual for right. Clear for takeoff. Clear for right. Clear for takeoff. Candy six zero three. Easy one nine eight six Oof, only just made the touchdown zone there, chat. Spoilers, D cell reverse green. Reverse the steward manual brakes. Oof! <laughs> I got a little bit skew with then, chat. I kept getting distracted. Oh, I thought I'd gone to manual brakes. There we go. That was not a bad, not too bad though. Not too bad. <laughs> I got I got distracted on short final there by the, the late landing clearance. I I must have missed his transmission while I was so focused. Get a 147, hello to you. Clearance is to Stansted, Laco 2 Alpha departure. Score 4405. I'm gutted I didn't record that one. That would have been an interesting one to watch back. Right, get the strobe lights off. Where the uh, radar and predictive wind shear off. And uh, coordinate and control. Tantavia 328, just confirm uh, we need to continue taxi via Victor for uh, Sandbox Rock 7. 328 follow Victor, Chaco, and Whiskey. Finesse, 7 Lehman Tango, vacated at Alpha 6. Finesse, 7 Lehman Tango, thank you. Follow the Scandinavian, or actually behind the Scandinavian, join 6 Welfare. Finesse, 7 Lehman Tango, thank you. Follow the Scandinavian, join 6 Welfare. Finesse, 7 Lehman Tango, thank you. Follow the Scandinavian, join 6 Welfare. Finesse, 7 Lehman Tango, thank you. Follow the Scandinavian, join 6 Welfare. Finesse, 7 Lehman Tango, thank you. Follow the Scandinavian, join 6 Welfare. Finesse, 7 Lehman Tango, thank you. Follow the Scandinavian, join 6 Welfare. Finesse, 7 Lehman Tango, thank you. Follow the Scandinavian, join 6 Welfare. Finesse, 7 Lehman Tango, thank you. Follow the Scandinavian, join 6 Welfare. Finesse, 7 Lehman Tango, thank you. Follow the Scandinavian, join 6 Welfare. Finesse, 7 Lehman Tango, thank you. Follow the Scandinavian, join 6 Welfare. Finesse, 7 Lehman Tango, thank you. Follow the Scandinavian, join 6 Welfare. Finesse, 7 Lehman Tango, thank you. Follow the Scandinavian, join 6 Welfare. Finesse, 7 Lehman Tango, thank you. Follow the Scandinavian, join 6 Welfare. Cross runway three zero. Right, after landing checklist, radar and predicted winter are off. After landing checklist complete. Seven six zero three runway zero four right. Clear take off three two zero eight knots. Right, what did we want? We want to stand Alpha two zero. Seven six three two Texas stand Bravo eight via Alpha Yankee and Mike cross runway three zero. Alright, can you repeat for stand over six three two? Oh, look at that aircraft up there. Beautiful. Oh, landing lights are still on. Oops. Oh, stash it. Oh, he stopped dead in the taxiway. Crikey. Welcome to Copenhagen though guys, welcome indeed, this is the Fly Tampa scenery, it's absolutely glorious. Digital content. Welcome indeed. Hope you're doing well. No, we departed at Helsinki. We're in Copenhagen now. Monarch 3 Alpha arrival. 
Monarch 3 Alpha Arrival 04 left and when ready, descend flight level 9 of 0, scale even 1 for input up. Scale even 3 belayed, clear to go for right, wind 3 to 38 knots. <laughs> Welcome there, dude. Hope you're doing well. Quiet Dynamics, thank you very much for the subscription. Right heading 180 and uh, climb 190. Finesse 7 Lima Tango, Texas, Stand Alpha 15, via Alpha, Yankee, and uh, Mike. Question via Alpha and Yankee, you may cross on the 3 Finesse 7 Lima Tango, can we request uh, Alpha 2 0? 7 Lima Tango in that case, follow Scandinavian in front, via Alpha, Romeo 3 0, Kilo 3, Lima, and Juliet. Well, the Scandinavian in front, crossing at runway 30. Uh, Alpha, was that Alpha, Yankee, and uh, Lima for Finnair 7 Lima Tango? Yeah, do not cross the runway, but inside, so use it as a taxiway. So, runway 30, Kilo 3, Lima, and Juliet. Ah, perfect. Yeah, got you. So, uh, turn left on uh, runway 30, Kilo 3, Lima, and Juliet. Uh, stand Alpha 20, Finnair 7 Lima Tango. Great. Okie doke. This controller is fantastic, isn't he? So much patience. <laughs> right. Lovely stuff. Welcome indeed, guys. Easy jet over there. Love to see it. Yeah, so this is Fly Tampa Copenhagen. It's been a while since we've been here on the stream. But uh, absolutely fantastic scenery. Fantastic. Absolutely love it. It is looking a little bit dated though, I do have to say. The ground texture is looking maybe a little bit on the blurry side nowadays. This was one of the first sceneries that... I think this was the first scenery that Fly Tampa did for the sim actually they have done some updates to it but uh oh look at that that's a bit funky but um nothing major i don't think Lovely stuff, chat. Lovely stuff. Landing rate predictions, though, if you want to throw them in the chat, by all means. Um, we'll have a look at the landing report once we uh, get to the stands. Oh, my days. <laughs> Slamming on the brakes again. On navigation, Derek B. Cook for Scandi 603. Keeping me on my toes, Sasha. Jeez Louise. Yeah, so with that landing chat, I think we were... Push and start and yeah, we were a little bit high, weren't we? But only one... We had one red, and then the glide slope kind of dropped a little bit. It went one dot below, but again, I don't really fully trust the glide slope nowadays in the sim. <laughs> As much as I used to do, I've fallen out with it. Um, and we got that late landing clearance. It totally threw me. I was probably going to get to a much better height for the flare uh, until I got that landing clearance, and then it, it threw my concentration a bit there. And then. Um, yeah, so we, we ended up coming in a little bit high and probably a little bit fast as well. So I ended up floating a little bit. 
But we did manage to get it down in the touchdown zone. And we were a little bit right of center line, if I remember correctly. But we were pointing in towards the center line. So not the end of the world. But, um, yeah, I, I just... My concentration went, so I didn't make that tiny correction to get back over onto the center line, unfortunately. But uh, let's see what the landing report says. Great scenery. So many aircraft here, crikey. Are these all Vatsim aircraft, or are they statics? Because I know this aircraft has statics. Oh no, they're Vatsim aircraft. I think they removed the statics, actually. Oops, I accidentally, accidentally pressed transmit. Right. Alpha 2 zero. We're going straight ahead here and then a left onto Juliet's. Alpha 2 zero, just there. Look at these. Look at the gates, just look so good, don't they? There's just something about the way Fly Tampa renders their textures for the buildings. It just looks really quite convincing. Right, here we go. Let's get the nose lights off. Off to zero. Not much of a turn to get in here, so I've got no excuse for not being dead on that center line. Do we have a VDGS? We don't. We've got a marshaller though. Direct, probably be Oh, apparently we're off the centre line to the right. Doesn't feel like we are. Now we're off to the left. What the hell, GSX man? Left and long roll out what the fuck? I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna do this myself. Right, I think that should do it. Right, lovely stuff. Okie dokes. He wants us to go further. We're not gonna. Yeah, look at these stands. They just look great. Okie dokes. So, uh, I've completely forgotten to start the APU because I'm smart. I left the strobe lights on as well. So I apologize to any of my other colleagues who got blinded. Right, uh, we'll shut down the left engine. And we'll get the ground crew to come over and connect the GPU initially. Because <laughs> I can't bother waiting for the APU. And we'll shut the uh, left engine down now. Alright, beacon light can come off. Seatbelt sign can come off. Fuel pumps. Wing lights are off. Transponder can come off as well. I'll reset the rudder trim as well whilst I'm here. Alright, cool. Parking checklist, parking brake is set and chocks are in. So we'll actually actually know that no they're not. Oh they are, actually. Right, we'll release the parking brake then, and uh, we'll get the jetway connected. 
Good evening, Kilo, correct. So, um, parking brake, uh, chocks are in, engines are off, wing lights are off, fuel pumps are off. Parking chat is complete. Lovely. Right then, chat. Have you guys ever wondered why the wing lights, this one here, this wing light switch is in the, uh, is in the parking checklist for the A320? I'm sure I watched a video about it recently. I can't remember where, where I learned this, but it's quite... There was actually an incident that happened once. Um, that happened where an aircraft left the wing lights on. And just the wing lights, they're, they're here. And they obviously point back towards the wing. Um, an aircraft left them on and, and they get quite hot apparently. And what had happened was there was... A, some ground equipment. I think it was a jetway that the light was being cast onto um, for an extended period of time. And it ended up setting the jetway on fire. So that's why it's in the shutdown checklist. <laughs> crazy. Right. There we go then, chats. Welcome to Copenhagen. I hope you guys enjoyed that flight. I think that was pretty, pretty cool doing the de-ice procedures at um, Oh, the jetway is poking through here, but that was quite cool doing the um, the procedures at um, the de-ice procedures at uh, Helsinki. I really enjoyed that. Right. Very, very good. Okay then, chat. So, let's have a look at the uh, the landing report. Unfortunately, I don't have a replay today, chat, because I was silly and I forgot to record it, but uh, never mind. Right, so, let's have a look at the landing report then, shall we? Okie dokies. So then, initially looking at the center line and touchdown zone, we just, just made the touchdown zone there. As you can see, right at the end. I think, honestly, that was probably a go-around. That's probably a go-around. Um, but I put it down and we managed to stop in time. So I'm not terribly concerned, but I think probably that should have been a go-around. Um, but nevertheless, we did it. On center line... So pretty good there. And uh, for the vertical speeds, we got minus uh, 100 and 172 feet per minute and speed 129 knots. So not bad at all, 1.05 G. So although, you know, we did a bit of a floater, it was pretty, pretty smooth, I think. Pretty not bad at all. So uh, yeah, there we go. Not too bad at all. Who got closest? You guys got some very close predictions there. So let's see who got actually closest. Um, it looks like it's Quizzy. Quizzy was one off. Very good. Nicely done there, sir. Nicely done. Very good. Right. Congratulations, Quizzy. Very good. Uh, Sasha, no worries at all. Thanks for dropping by. Thanks for flying along. And uh, yeah, unfortunately not doing the return today. I do want to go and get some uh, some tea. Uh, I know in the States, all lights except the logo lights are mandatory. Mandatory to be turned off at the stand, you mean? Or mandatory to be turned on. I'm not sure. Marshall is singing a song, I believe I can fly, yeah. <laughs> Either that or he's listening to like some scooter or something in his headphones and he's just raving away. You missed the de-icing, Matt Wrestle, where you can always rewind. That's the beauty of YouTube. Oh, I see what you mean, Roy. All lights except for the logo lights are mandatory up to 18,000. Oh, really? I didn't know that. That's uh, interesting. I've always turned them off at 10,000 in the US. Interesting. Interesting. 
so even the logo, even the uh, wing lights. Uh, Peter says, I always enjoy your streaming. So have a great weekend and see you on the next flight. Thank you very much for dropping by, Peter. You have a great weekend too. And I'll catch you in the next one for sure. Thank you very much for dropping by. Thank you, thank you. Right then, guys. Unfortunately, like I say, I was um, I was not smart and I did not record a replay here. So we don't have too much to uh, to watch here. But I'll tell you what we can do is... Um, let's just have a very quick browse around Copenhagen because it's been a while since I've been here. So, I mean, they, they haven't done much on the land side here, but the air side is just so, so spot on. Like, it just looks great, doesn't it? You can't really fault it. Right, look at that. Brilliant. Jetways are great too. They've done a little bit of the interior. Well, quite a lot actually. More than I thought. But the glass, unfortunately, you can't see out of. It's just black. I'm not sure. I don't doubt it's like that at the real airport, but hey-ho. Got some passengers going up the jetway as well. Love to see it. Very, very nice. But yeah, it's just a fantastic, fantastic rendition. This looks great, doesn't it? And you've got the bridge over there. That's actually added by the World Update, I think. But I think originally this scenery did add that. I think they had to remove it, though, because of the Sobos. Addition. So many, so many aircraft here, to be fair, on VATSIM. Really, really cool. Right then, chat. Um, I think I'm going to have to leave it there because, unfortunately, I've got nothing, no replays to show you like I normally do. <laughs> so we're going to have to leave it there, unfortunately. But, um, oh, beautiful. Right then, chat. Thank you so much for tuning in. If you've enjoyed, please do not forget to hit the thumbs up button on the way out. Have we got the Latin VFR Jetways add-on? I uh, haven't, no, George, no. Um, no need for it, really, with uh, GSX. And to be honest, I mainly fly out of airports with generally custom Jetways anyway. So, um, no, I can't really comment on that one. <clears throat> it looks okay though it looks okay but again um yeah i've not really got any experience with it right okay chat thank you very much for watching i hope you have a fantastic saturday evening whatever you're doing i am streaming again tomorrow uh, at some point in the afternoon i'm not sure exactly what time it will be yet probably somewhere after about three o'clock in the afternoon zulu time um so uh, hopefully i'll catch you guys then if not um i'll catch you guys sometime next week like i say have a fantastic Saturday evening. And uh, once again, thank you so much. Bye for now.